All right, let's get into today's podcast here. Aloha, everybody from the YouTube channel. Welcome back to another podcast. As you can see, it's becoming more of a custom now that uh, podcast is having six people. So, I mean, it's more fun, right? More people, more interactions, hopefully less dead air time and more, you know, hopefully disputes and, you know, debates between people would be nice and discussions. So, um, should be nice. Should be very fun. Invictus, Lucky, Obabel, Thompson, Tyler, what's love? Welcome back. Good to have you guys back here today. We have a lot of things to Thank talk you. about. Um, before we get into any of these topics, uh, which, um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about. Anything you have to say, Thompson? Anything, uh, anything you want to say? Anything I going have, on? What's I want to say, but I have, it's something about something I don't want you guys to say. Don't sure. talk about Molly on this stream, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It wasn't even on my, wasn't even on my mind. That was the first thing mind. I wanted to bring up. Yeah, that's I was actually, actually, I, okay, I, I, I see, I see the difference here. I will stop. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's. So, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move on to topic number one here. Topic number one that we have here is uh, Molly OP question mark. Is Molly actually an OP unit? Really? Yeah. Can we not talk about Thompson, it? You shouldn't have said it, dude. You I'm just kidding. I just changed that right now, dude. Topic one is actually what are your predictions, guys, on what Thompson LDNAT five is going to pull today on stream? I know. Like, hey, on podcast, are you what, are you pulling a are you pulling a Shiana today? Molly five star. I think. <laughs> Molly five star, yeah. He would be happy. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. He'd be happy about that. Be sick. I would be sick. But you know what'll be weird? The um regular version won't be like won't yeah, show that's up true. on Monster Box. Yeah. 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 Bad for the Pokedex. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that true. Pokedex entry. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, anyways. Moving into today's topic number one, RTA emotes. Thompson. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, they, we actually uh, talked it. about this how, how long ago, like several months ago, right? We kind of brought yeah. it up. We're like, hey, it's be a cool idea. Then Thompson elaborated more and he's like, yeah, that'd be awesome to BM and stuff and and, and whatnot. And they finally, BM? you know, like the, have a little like a BM, you know, when you BM with no. emotes and spam saw, that. I, okay, I said good. that then. I said that then. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's the culture of the games, right? To BM and, you know, have those emotes, you know, have some fun with those. And we see it in a lot of other games. So I'm glad they incorporated it. What are your thoughts on it? And, um... Yeah, what are your just your th general thoughts on this? What they can expand they this into? They need to add a mute button. <laughs> so not not gonna lie, dude. It's, it's uh, <laughs> they've added this in other games before too, and people start complaining about it really soon. Like in the RTA season, people start abusing it, and I don't know. It it's, it's not really a good thing when people start to trigger another person like mentally. So yeah, I, I it's cool like idea. Yeah, yeah, I feel like this should be a topic for like one month later when we actually have a real RTA season. And then we'll see what like the real thoughts about it uh, is. But yeah, I think I'll... there should be a fucking mute button. I think yeah. there should be a mute button. Sure. Like it's it's ridiculous that you can implement something into the game like that that is so in your face and you can't just like block it yeah. out. You can block anyone in chat that you want, but you can't block out emotes in your RTA match. Actually, like w one thing that I noticed is that it's not too in your face. Like sometimes I don't even notice if they emote because it's like all the way upside in the. You'll right notice corner. if you're being roped. For, for like a yeah, solid 40 turns straight of Ganya Thor. You see the video on yeah. Reddit of the guy in Noob Room who roped that guy? He took 30, he took max time on every single attack. And just spam And emotes used an emote every, yeah, he put three oh. emotes in between every single turn and just Ganya Thor the guy. That's and annoying. I, yeah. wanna, I wanna say one thing real quick here about that. People that post videos like that, people that talk about things like that, make it worse. Because now everybody hears about it. Everybody goes like, I want to do that and be that one guy. Yeah. So by innately talking about it and uh, memeing and making, posting a video on how crazy that it is that they got memed or they got roped or whatnot, that actually makes people want to do it more. It's like the psychological thing that works that people never think about. The more you like, you know, go against your bully or whatever it is in life, right? The more that they get what they want out of it and the more they'll do it. But I think it's a part of the culture in the game to kind of do that. You know what I mean? Like emote and stuff like that. But I agree, there should be a mute button. I mean, I, I'll give them some time to implement it, right? Since they just, you know, put the emotes in. But I think there should be a mute button. And I think that's fairly easy to, you know, request for. So, uh, very common. Yeah, another game I played. That, uh, oh, sorry. Nope. Okay. Um, uh, inherently, actually, like from a moral standpoint, I really hard disagree with that. Um, really? Putting that perspective out there actually influences people to remain silent on things that bother them and issues as a whole it's never a good idea to like tell people hey if you're doing something like this and speaking out against behavior that you don't like or behavior that you find toxic if you just ignore it it'll go away no that's not how the world works we live in 2020 people are so in your face they're so riddled with the fact that they can be anonymous for everything that they're going to pressure all these things i think it's totally acceptable and probably the better thing to do to speak out against it 
because that's what's going to push the developer to actually make a change and realize that it's it is bothering people. But uh, my main point, uh, if you get it, is doing things the right way. I've always been an advocate of you know, stating what's going on, whether you're trying to make a game better or whatever it is, doing it the right way in the right place. You're telling me that there was a video of that posted on Reddit. That does not mean a lot well, to, me. to us. Is, come to us is known for not being responsive to tickets anyway. Yeah, so you're, it's you're, kind of their fault. It's like you're posting it on <laughs> so Reddit. I agree you know with I mean? Tyler. But, I mean, Where you, else they're, 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 posting, they're posting it on the most public yeah. and most viewed forum they have. The one that yeah. everybody sees and the one that people actually use. I, I, I don't look at Reddit anymore. Way. I actually don't look well, at it anymore. We don't look at Reddit, but how many people are subscribed to the Reddit on there, right? How many I mean, people, people actually check out Reddit? But is that a, but, but what I'm saying like, is that is that is that, is that is that avenue going to be a positive platform for that or is it going to be a negative because it can go both ways? It starts because... the discussion. It starts the discussion regardless. So I think that's the whole point, right? Mm. I, I've always been a firm believer that the more you react to something negative, the more you, that you don't want something to happen, you react negatively to it or you meme or you make jokes on it. You give more to the people that are doing it. Yeah. Instead of staying in the right avenue. So like if 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 we think that emoting is a bad thing, right? And we think that people are spamming it this i feel like would be a great medium for it right this is where we can discuss and be like hey you know we need mute buttons you know things like this are you know very toxic and you know it takes too much time people are roping and this is the right avenue to address it but addressing a certain other platforms i feel don't do it as much justice right but i do understand how, where you're coming from tyler you how many people be silent, outside right? of uh, how many how many people outside of us actually get on this platform though how many people have access to a platform like this right what do you mean there there are maybe like 20 of us or less that have access to a platform of this degree, like the podcast, right? Saying like mm -hmm. that is the right platform. The majority of people don't have a right platform. Reddit is the best platform for them. I think if you want to take less shots in life and be very miserable and also be less successful, you got to really care what people say. So like, I think uh, what um, Island Girl is trying to say is that like, Stuff like this is not a big deal. You don't have to post it up on Reddit and make a big deal out of it and then fuel and then act like you care about it a lot, you know, because it's crazy. just like it's just bad behavior, you know, in my opinion. Yeah. So I, I feel it's is more it wrong to bring light to bad behavior. Yeah, but it's, no, it, it's I'm saying in the right place. You care about some someone roping you. It's just RTA. You know what I mean? Right. It's it's like they're, they're, I feel like people that are posting on Reddit is not I, I don't I have to go look and read it. I will look and read it after this. I feel like it's all going to be memes and trolls. I, I haven't read it as well. Right. Yeah, I haven't read it as well. But it, in my opinion, if I see something like that, it's or something like that happens to me, it's best to not care about it. You know, like yeah. if you care about everything in life like that, oh, I'm playing a game and someone's roping me. and I'm upset. Uh, Man, that makes life very miserable for you, you know? Yeah. But anyways, back to the topic here of uh, of emotes. I mean, Tyler's not wrong. You know, definitely speaking out is I'm important. not saying he's wrong. No, there there are some stuff you have to speak up for, and right. you definitely. I feel like you're very uh, right about it, and then the passion is real. But some stuff is like just a game. You're getting like you know, uh, emotes is a new uh, stuff they're implementing. If you care about it too much, you're gonna be kind of miserable in life in general. Yeah. So I think there's a right right play way to convey it and the message and whatnot. But yeah, I think mute buttons are definitely uh, should be a thing. That should be a thing in the game. But going back, um, yeah. So I guess oh, ahead, I guess ahead. either mute button or like buffing Ganyathor damage would uh, would both work. <laughs> <I don't understand>. <laughs> <laughs> so I um I held a RTA tournament last night, and I don't know if you guys knew, but that patch update that they dropped yesterday mm -hmm. was to there was a few bug fixes that they had. So I don't know if you guys knew, but the uh, in spectator form, you wouldn't be able to see the emotes pop up. But now mm, in spectator mm. form, they do pop up. Oh, And nice. I was holding a tournament last night, and it was actually pretty fun. Because you'd end up in situations where people were sending each other emotes, and they pop up on the screen with their name. It was quite entertaining to see, because they weren't being overused. You can see when people have gotten mad, because there's the, you know, the Ryan throwing the hat sort of thing. And that was my crying favorite. emote when there's procs. It was actually a really good element to add to it because it gave a bit more flavor to RTA from a spectator sport. So I was able to sit back and go, oh yeah, this person's mad because they, they keep spamming the, um, they've been locked down and they're spamming the Orion throwing the hat emote. It was actually a lot of fun. It was really good to see. I think it was something at first I was like, okay, maybe if I was playing, it would frustrate me. I haven't been playing just yet, so I don't know what that experience is. But from a spectating perspective, it was actually really, really cool to see something like that implemented. Yeah. Uh, I so, agree. Like I also saw some uh, replays, just like regular special league matches, and people you could see it when they do the emotes during the replays. So it's kind of nice too. 
Yeah, they save exactly the timing on the replays. I mean, of when they put the emotes, right? That's that's kind of yeah, funny. Yeah, kind of cool. It could. So I think I think the muting implementation is definitely a thing, so that you don't see it. Uh, and secondly, maybe like a, a spam filter, so like you can't like maybe spam spam it. You know what I mean? Like there's gonna be like, oh, you're talking too fast, or you're doing too many at one time, right? There, there's definitely filters like that um, out there to be put. But I don't know what's your, what's your opinion on this 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 like taunting. Yeah, I I actually think it's a normal culture in games to have a little bit of taunt, a little bit of flair in that in that aspect of the game. But I don't think everybody will agree with it, right? I always thought it was kind of normal in like a lot of games to have that aspect in that culture. But a lot of people disagree, right? Because they say uh, it can be very toxic. So let's talk a little bit so, about that. So I think it's I think it's normal. I think it's I think it's completely fine to taunt your opponents, right? But every other game you can mute it. Every okay. other game you can mute it. Dota you can mute the chat wheel. In League you can block and mute people. You you can mute everybody, right? In in all these other games, I'm just all I'm saying is like if you just add the option of muting, it really doesn't matter, right? Because once you once you've added that option, then you can just do whatever you want. You can taunt that person. You can not use emotes. You can spam whatever you want, right? No, I mean like League also has the option to like turn off emotes as a whole that you don't yeah. even have to mute. You, you can like yeah, that just... would be uh, fine too. True, true. Right. All <laughs> I'm pushing for is just to have yeah. the option if like if you choose if you do not want to be harassed, you should not be in a position where you like sit there and you're like either I'm gonna play play the game and get harassed or not. Like, yeah. I think uh, it, this it's is really the not that hard to, to implement emotes and that will eventually come out. It makes sense what Tyler's saying. You know? Yeah, it yeah. I think just like like an on or off button would be nice because uh, squelch like, as a Hearthstone. Yeah, says. squelch. <laughs> like, yeah. But, but by the point you're actually squelching or muting. Then you're already like triggered by the modes, so yeah. you might just want to unless, unless you go in and you start it right off the bat. Like when I when I played League and Dota like high levels, I used to just immediately block all chat. I would only use team chat, nothing else. Right, right. Yeah, I actually turned off all chat off of as well now. What did you say, Invictus? Uh, I was only talking off of experience too, because I played uh, before this game Clash Royale, and they did a similar thing where they released like the emotes, which mm. are kind of in the same form as these. They were like laughing emotes, crying emotes. And at first people were like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. But then people would start like, uh, even though it may have been a minority, but people would start to spam them if they won. They'd spam like a crying emote, crying emote, like just to try and get in people's faces. And it went on for a couple of months before they finally implemented the mute button. But by that time, the whole community was kind of behind adding the mute feature. So it does get abused. And I mean, it's, it's a fun thing, but some people take it too far and that's where you just kind of need it in case people want that uh don't want that extra stress so true true it's a good idea that they did it still that's true yeah for me maybe i, I it's like like that's what that's what i'm saying i want to see people's opinions because for me like not a lot of things bother me so like obviously my perception is really warped and biased right because i'm like oh it's just emotes like it's whatever you know what i mean it's not gonna bother me because it doesn't it doesn't like if anything i'll meme on it right i'll be upset at it and whatnot for like just for fun right but i mean it doesn't bother me so it's good to see people other people uh, people's uh perspective uh on this uh, one thing I will say is that for people that get triggered by this, I will let you know if they are spamming the emotes, right? Keep in mind, there's nothing you can do that can stop them, at least for right now, right? So do not spam any of your emotes back at them. Any emote that you respond back to them when they're spamming emotes will actually make them continue to do it more or worse, right? So just a little fun tip. Any emote you're going to do. So if you don't want them to do any more emotes, do not put any of your emotes or react to them at all, right? And they may stop roping you because they might just be like, hey, this is a waste of my actual time just spamming these emotes and I'm getting no reaction out of this guy. So keep that in mind. Uh, do you think they'll sell packs of these? Do you think we'll have rewards for these? Or what do you guys think, right? That's immediately what people are saying like, ooh, emote packs? Oh, like 100%. You already see yeah? it in the Man. menu. <laughs> it's coming out soon. We know it. <clears throat> So uh, I, I, I think they, I feel like they were kind of lazy with the emotes. Like I know they imported the line ones. There's a line emotes, but yeah. As a comparison from Epic Seven, like the Epic Seven emotes are way better. Epic Seven has emotes. Epic what Seven has really good emotes. The emotes are animated. I can post them in Discord so, for you. So you, you can want. turn it on and off in Epic yeah, Seven already. You can, you can block people. Oh, that's someone who's always going to do it. Like really, really soon. Yeah, yeah. they're just uh, downloading the coding right now from E7, so that they can implement. Uh, question: to, uh, do, do they sell packs for the E7 emotes? No, they just have one set so. that's free right now. I oh. posted some in Discord if you want to see what they look like. Oh, cute. Yeah. Kawaii. But that's not that's not fair to say too that uh they were lazy and they took it from line. That just means the same things that if they move that if E7 does that to well, line, the then they're lazy with that the, too. I I right? also feel like the line stickers were kind of lazy, you know. Yeah, they like, weren't they weren't that they're, crazy. They're not they they're not crazy. at like they're like they're not static. 
they're animated, but they're animated to such a small degree. The one, the one that's really nice, I think, is the hat throwing one because that hat one actually that's the good. best. One it has a good like emotion and can convey with it, right? But with the other ones, I feel like they're like a little bit on the lazier side. Yeah. Like, they could have been more. I mean, I, I guess there's also like less visual. Uh, what do you call it? It's it, it's less cluttered when you're uh, in game if they're like less animated. True. So I guess that's like one uh, one good thing. I like to see more like the hat throwing one though. Like that that captures the perfect emotion in that. So good, so good. <laughs> dude. That, I I said that was like the best one so far. That I enjoyed. That when you get procked on or whatnot, you just throw the hat. Oh, it's just so funny, dude. <laughs> now we just need like voice chat and we're, uh, and we're okay. Done. Relax. What about, um, relax. Do you guys have have you seen the iPhone sticker ones? No voice what? chat. Oh, oh the, the summoner is Thompson. Thompson. There's uh there's summers where stickers for like iOS and stuff that are really cute. Like those could be good emotes. Mm. You guys have seen those before? Like the verb ones, like this they came up with it like two years oh, ago or something. Stickers. Verb. Oh no no no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember those. There's there's a couple of uh things that you can send. Yeah, yeah. I have the summoners or ones on my iPhone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple of those. Those, 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 are would, cute. those would be good stickers. Those would be cute ones, yeah. They they should definitely impl uh, implement those. Yeah, I have a couple of them here. Well, those yeah. are exactly what I mean. Like that would be perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are nice. And those, those like I feel like are there's way more than just having all the Orion ones. Yeah, and there's, there's some more. Yeah, so they, uh, they're pretty cute. They're pretty cute. They could definitely do those. These are actually it's very similar to some of the stickers, like actual stickers that they released, like IRL ones that they made and to give away and stuff too. So I think I think they definitely have these to do. There's actually quite a few of these. Yeah, like these last ones actually have a little bit, a bit of animation as well to them, which is uh, kind of cute. So, the uh, Hua Spanking Lucian one's pretty questionable. Yeah, I, I want that I one, dude. I'm using that one in our <laughs> day. Uh, dude. So, yeah, hopefully they implement those. That'd be nice. Um, I definitely see them having it as some kind of, like, maybe bonus end-of-season reward. Uh, maybe uh, purchasable through various RTA points in the shop. Uh, and also maybe through the legendary pack. You know how this month's legendary pack has the five reaps? Maybe yeah. instead of a building or an animal, it'll be in there. I don't know if they will try to sell a full emote pack. You know what I mean? Nope. That would be interesting if they did something like that, but I guess we'll see. I feel like these are more add-ons and these should be more rewards and in small areas. I don't think me personally would be opposed to emote packs being sold because anything aesthetic being sold really doesn't, um, you know, do a lot, right? Like who's against they might be like, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. They might be like special league uh, reward as well, I feel. Right. Right. To kind of promote those a little bit more, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any last thoughts here on the emotes? We're gonna see how these like progress in the next couple of uh, weeks and months as they implement more features and more emotes, I guess. <clears throat> okay. Uh, moving on to topic number two for the day. Topic number two: Legend Tournament. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's some things going on. People talking about some stuff for Legends Tournament and whatnot that happened this weekend. Let's talk a little bit about it. Um, Legends Tournament just occurred this weekend. Uh, how to play was the winner. Uh, it was True Whale, uh, Dog Guy. This. Korea guy and how to play, I believe, is the uh, four players for the Legends tournament. If you guys want to check that out, we also uploaded a video shortening some of the downtimes on it. It's about a one-hour video about you know the tournament and whatnot, as well as a heads-up commentary peanut gallery with uh, J Mac and Fate Map. So that's pretty funny. Yeah, to go through that. If you guys want to watch that, that's up on YouTube as well for you guys to enjoy. But what are you guys' thoughts on this tournament? Um, what they did good, what they did bad, because there were some issues uh, going on in the tournament, and suggestions for future tournaments for Legends tournament. <laughs> <clears throat> Who wants to start? I know everybody's, so much got talk about uh, everybody's got a little something I know, to say. I, know. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go first. I'll go ahead. And um, I mean, so I mean, we all know the obvious, which was in the the finals game, which I guess is where we can start. And sure. they had the second game that they not only forced a repeat on because of a DC, but they had an hour delay in the meantime, like in between that uh, DC and. There must have been some communication going on, but first of all, I felt like if you watch, I mean, if you watch the first, second game and then the repeat of it, the opener is just completely different. And it's like polar opposite RNG both ways. It's like one, the Tian Lang doesn't really land anything. The other one, the Tian Lang lands everything. So it kind of feel like how to play got like whether it was intentional or not intentional, how to play got an, uh, jail, a get out of jail free card, basically. Like there was no mulligan for the round there was they, they handled it pretty pretty poorly so uh yeah it kind of made a huge difference because true would have been up and he was in a favorable spot he would have been up 
and being at match point versus going back to one one after an hour delay where you're already you know becoming more tired you're pretty pissed off your emotions are now getting in the way of like the drafting and also just you're just upset with the whole situation because the yeah because the, you're feeling like you're being penalized and there's no penalty for the other guy when it wasn't your fault so all that stuff took place and it kind of made the whole tournament like the result kind of the result was kind of uh questionable to me so, so i mean did you so, did you rewatch the match Andrew? uh yeah i did so do you still think true whale is in a favorable position because i think almost all of us here disagree with that yeah, we i still think it. that I still think that uh, at that point he was in a better position than he was in the second game. Okay, but that's different. Yeah, that's saying he's in a better that's position true. and saying he was favored to win are two different things. Because if he's favored to win, then having the restart is really bad because he ended up losing when he was favored to win. If he was not favored to win and they restarted and he still lost, it's not as bad. Like I understand there's the mental conditioning for it, which I agree with you. I think that's pretty unfair. But I also don't necessarily blame how to play for that. I think I more blame how Comptuous handled the issue. No, I don't. I'm not I blaming agree. how to play at all for this. I'm blaming the way it was handled by Comptuous. <clears throat> okay, I just wanted to make sure, like, I understood what you were saying clearly. Yeah, a couple of different layers that are going on here with this, and this is good to talk about. This is very good to talk about. So, I mean, um, I, I went back and uh, on the stream as well. We kind of analyzed it. I'm actually a rooter for Truwell. Uh, I want Truwell to win, but uh, we analyzed the match and from the current position from when the game was paused. Uh, the the steps that were going to lead after that or the moves that were leading after that from that position uh, were highly not in favor of um, True Whale. And this is assuming, and no, not assuming, this is uh, with the best case scenario, right? As you said, the Tian Lang not stripping and not stunning. So that match was the best chance True Whale had to win. And he was in a very unfavorable, honestly, I, I would say 99.9% .9 losing that match in a already favorable start to the match. So the next match being unfavorable obviously wouldn't be good. But looking back at that, the next things that were going to occur, the reason why we could say it was a 100% loss rate is going to be because there are units that do things at 100% chance, aka Nefties and aka Gani. And because those units do things with guaranteed certainty, we can know that the match was in lock and highly secured from that position. So that, that's the reason why, you know, I feel like the, the, the reset was favorable for True Whale. Even though he lost it, it was favorable to reset for another chance or opportunity to play it out. But the but second see, that's question... Where I just, that's where I disagree, though. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I don't disagree with that at all. Okay, sure. Go ahead. What, uh, what, what do you disagree uh, with? Well, I mean, because if you're saying, like, if your point is that he was in a spot where he was at mm -hmm. a disadvantage because of draft-wise and the next steps that would follow, well, the next match that got reset, all of a sudden now he's in an even worse spot it wasn't like he was out of the game. I mean, the next things that followed were what? Artemil heals Nepthys. Ganny ventilates Nepthys. Ganny uh, Nepthys gets another Curse of the Beautiful off. Correct. But even still, like all the units are still pretty much near max health. One proc out of one proc gets out of silence. But the Fred doesn't then, have immunity. Yeah. That's the biggest part. The Fred, all, all your cooldowns are expended. Yeah, but then one, but one then, proc still gets. And Ganny screams the next turn to reset with 100% search today and attack bar reduction, and Nepthys is in control again. Right, is that that's that's so, what I'm saying. So, so yes, the the match was going to be really hard for him, but that doesn't change the fact that that was a better situation for him. The restart does not favor him because the draft was weaker. The restart only favors the person who has the better draft. Yeah, maybe I was a little bit drastic in saying 100% win rate. I take that back. I apologize. Yeah, we, even yeah, even, if, even if it is 100% win rate, right? Yeah, it's it's, like it's the logic that like the restart 100% will always favor whoever has the better draft. Correct. But, it, right, but, but is, it, turn. is it fair to say that the, uh, the the reset also can favor the person that is currently in a losing position? Statistically, no. no. Because the chance for the same thing to happen or more in favor of True Wales is like under 30%. Right? If it's over 50, then sure. Yeah, it does. But then that means that his draft is more favorable, right? True. No, now that I'm thinking about it more in, uh, yeah. from what you guys are saying, yeah. that's true. Because if that was, even though they had a bad draft, the best chance for him to win, it... He, should, he would want to play out the best chance that he could win, even if it's 1%, right? So At I this think point, I we're kind of just arguing true. semantics. Like, we're just nipping yeah, we're the true. details of what we yeah, say. Yeah. I, I do think that we're all in agreement, though. Like, yeah. calm to us should have handled it better. Does anyone yeah, disagree with that? Possible, I guess. Definitely. Or no. be more consistent with the decisions they made around it as well. Or have a pre existing rule for you. It was the instance of, like, restarting well, that so... match and continuing on 
the the following match because there was a similar issue where there was a pause but they continued whereas with this one they decided to restart so there was two very similar situations but handled very differently and i think contos right now need to come out and actually say something to clarify why they did things differently in both those scenarios leaving us in the dark just makes us sit here and speculate and it it does no good for us as well like yeah. it doesn't do any good for anyone right yeah. not knowing exactly why they came up with those decisions because at the end of the day right with how swc is going to be set up being online they need to clarify all this up front because imagine being an swc participant seeing something like this happen and the tournament's going to be played very similar in this very similar format you want to know exactly what's going to be happening in those scenarios moving forward right right yeah, I think it was actually good that this happened now. I think it was Definitely. good. Because, yeah. so, like, especially since Legend Tournament is just like a... It's a bit of a circle jerk right now. Exhibition. So it's good that that one actually, like, does something good for SWC. Like, until they actually push out, like, re abuses and stuff from the Legend Tournament. Then I'm not too, like, uh, invested into it. So, yeah. Um... This, this happened in the past. This happened in the past, and that's kind of why it frustrates most people, is because... Do you remember in 2017, it was the LA... It was a, an offline tournament in with Chuffles, <clears throat> and Chuff, Chuffles ended up winning that year of the... Oh, um, okay. Chuffles won the America's Cup for that year. I think it was 2017, playing against Asian Republic, I think. And his device DC'd when he was unfavored. Like, he was losing by a lot. And then because of the restart, he came back to win. And it created a huge controversy on if that should have even happened because he was so... Like, the chance for him to win was so low and the DC happened. It it created this issue where everyone wanted to know, okay, if this happens in the future, what are you going to do, come to us, and be clear on it? And they, for the last three years, they've just had, like, different rules at different events, right? So people were saying that in the online qualifiers... It's an automatic DC, but I actually don't know if that's true because I've never seen that rule book because it's not public. Yeah, I, I think and if they I think were to that make is it an set, issue. It's important for them to have a set rule that we know. I I think they need to have a public set of rules for tournaments, whether they're online or SWC or qualifiers, just so that everyone is in the same. Like we all know, like right now we're just in the dark. Like how are they going to handle it if it happens in SWC? Are they going to do the same thing? Is it going to be different? You know what are the like what are the situations that they're gonna set up? I for? think it happened again, right? And they just like froze it and then restart it based on where it <clears throat> DC. Because, yeah, like, which is why I don't understand why they couldn't game. do it with this one. I think it's because well, it's yeah, not it's not actually right. SWC. It's just a legends tournament, so it's not being handled by like a team of production and whatnot in the back. It's just handled by a couple people. So it's, it's like we said, it's a legends tournament, right? It's so, an SWC. But why, why isn't it handled like that? It should be true. I'm not saying Apparently it should. Try. What do you, what do you say, Andrew? Apparently they tried to, and I don't think, that, I mean, there was some technical difficulty, but at the same time, it must suck to be in the position of True Rail because all of a sudden you have to feel yeah. like yeah. Comptua should have a rule in place so the contestant itself doesn't have to feel like they're, you know, being selfish in saying, I don't accept this restart because I don't like the fact that it's going to redo a position where, you know, maybe the contestant thought they were in a favorable spot and it's not really fair to leave that up to the contestants whether or not they should redo it it should be there's a send fast rule you abide by that rule and if not you know if the person dc's it's it's their fault not to say like hey would you mind restarting it and then if you say no you're kind of going back and forth yeah i think if they they, they if they set a rule like that that would be better it, it, it logically i agree that makes more sense right the person that disconnected will eat the loss or at or may ask for a restart if the opponent agrees. Like that just sounds like such a logical set of rules, right? If you disconnected, you're... unlucky for you, you lose the match. Or you may I ask your opponent. If you're playing a um, like a mobile game and there's a tournament and it's online, it's hard. Like it could be on their fault, it could be on their end, it could be on our end. Yeah. There's gonna be disconnects or technical problems, you know. So moving forward, mm, I think the best way is just like for them to be able to pause where the person got disconnected, disconnected. And then being able to restart at that time, you know? Yeah, yeah well, agreed. That, that'd be ideal. That would have been what, like, that's the, know, best. Yeah. the whole thing would have been avoided. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. that's what we're uh, what we're getting now after this uh, yeah. situation. Definitely. I think they will take it more seriously after this incident for sure. I think someone fucked up. 
you know the person that sent the map because the if you guys don't know the way the tournament works yeah. when they do tournament they the the tournament admin sends a, a request to each player to accept the battle each other you know usually when you do rts in the rooms you send a battle to one another the comp to us admin sends a battle to each player to accept and join in so the admin has full access i think the admin fucked up and accidentally during the disconnect like left the match or something and because like they left it or they they dropped that match, it lost all the data of that current match that was existing or stuff like that. You, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Or at least... So I think they fucked up. They, there was a mistake. It was a mistake on their end. They you couldn't revitalize it. Come out and it. say you gotta come out and say, yeah, hey, we fucked up. Yeah. We're sorry. Yeah. I agree. But we fucked up. Yeah, admit. I don't admit know about coming out happens. and saying like we fucked up or we're sorry, but then like it's uh, more magnified because it's like the finals. Also, like, you know how much blood, sweat, and tears you have to put in to get to top four in Legend, you know? Well, I think that's why they should come out and say, hey, we made we made a mistake, right? Mm, they need to come out and yeah. say something. You can't they just have, they, they have to do that for Alex's sake, right? Like, it's it's very, very hard, you know, putting in all that, like you said, blood, sweat, time, and effort to feel like you got cheated, right? Even, even if you, yeah, yeah I, you kind of just, just got robbed. Like, I just yeah. don't really care about, like, being like held in the past you know talking about like oh coming out and say sorry I, I don't care about you saying sorry it matters more to me that you guys will implement different rules moving forward you know yeah like if i think they we came just up, they, they they came they started started acknowledging it right right huh? yeah yeah what about what about this what about if Wait, there what, was what did enough say? they come out acknowledging i just said that it. acknowledging it yeah the, sorry is more of the gesture showing that they actually acknowledge that they made a mistake and they're listening to okay. concerns. That it's just for accountability, that. right? Yeah. If you and if you acknowledge you made a mistake, then we can hold you accountable for your mistake. So do you, do you prefer them just saying sorry to Alex or just telling the whole world we're sorry we fucked up? They they should tell everyone. It's it's a yeah. public event. I mean, haven't they like messaged the players anyways? It's just yeah, but the rest of it. us are like we don't we don't know. Like we only know what we're told from other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Then that that's not something we should. It's kind of shitty to discuss like. The rumors about it that we heard you know i don't think i'm uh, uh i have a different point of view i just don't think i'm owed an apology i mean apology would be nice but then i just want them to move forward and be able to change um yeah. the future tournaments you know like they could come and out and nice say the issue of it. alex paved the way <laughs> yeah. for a better format for everybody yeah they call it the true whale rule <laughs> <laughs> yeah the true whale rule yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, sorry, i gotta look back into our rule book here yeah under guideline 4.8 for t.w yeah uh <laughs> but as, as long as uh, you know moving forward in the swc and tournaments that they have what do you guys think if if, if the rule i mean i i don't you know earlier tyler you're saying like the rules are changing but even if the rules are changing i don't think that's the big thing because the the main thing is that when you have the tournament you make the rules clear for the players in that tournament for that year and as long as all the players know i think it's fair for everybody right so i think clarity is the most important though on any of these things that occur right clarity and laying down the rules but i'm sure they didn't really lay down rules and whatnot for the legends tournament i'm unsure but they didn't have anything like that or else yeah wouldn't be in this predicament right but um yeah any any more thoughts on this uh this tournament in general are there suggestions for future ones i mm, i don't know if i want to say this on podcast but like i also think um all right that maybe instead of agreeing to you know play a restart the match you guys should just held your ground a little bit that too because it happened to me before and i just like held my ground but yeah <clears throat> you know what i mean yeah maybe yeah, maybe no, there wasn't any payoff for, there wasn't any payoff for giving in huh yeah, so, so like, the, yeah, the, I agree. There wasn't any, there wasn't any payoff for giving in. Yeah, like, yeah. nothing beneficial happened on True Will's end, mm -hmm. except, yeah, uh, yeah. So unfortunate situation, but hopefully, you know, it, it became a, an issue that Contus can see and they can fix for the future, right? Learn, learning from mistakes are important, right? Don't make the same stupid mistake twice. That's, that's, that's definitely important, right? I, I like, I like to say, give them shit on the stuff that they do wrong, but hopefully they improve. Yeah, because uh, it's definitely not going to be any leeway. You're going to get a, a lot of shit. It's going to stink like hell. Yeah, if you make the same mistake multiple times. So <laughs> it would be uh, it'd be great that they learned this for SWC moving forward. Uh, nonetheless, uh, my overall thoughts were, your, what were you guys' overall thoughts on the Legends tournament? I thought it was okay. Um, obviously, this thing that we talked about kind of, you know, 
change the mood of a legend tournament i did see a lot of whole a whole lot of like crazy comps and entertaining things that i was we saw in the last oh. legend tournament so yeah. that was kind of lame it was missing um the tomato effect right <laughs> yes. tomato is one that comes out with the uh the crazy comps and you could tell that it was missing in this one it was very standard I mean, brass um and that's why like yeah it, there was not there wasn't as much diversity that's what i kind of found we had one game it's where really it felt like Tomato oh, was uh, drafting again. I don't know oh, which one it was, but I think it was in one of the first rounds. They came out like random match? Sierra, Gani, Yan Hong, stuff yeah, like that. that. Dog and feel, yeah, yeah, dog guy. That was oh, weird, yeah. dude. That was so weird. That was the weirdest draft I've ever I've ever seen, dude. I like, mean, that is pretty like Tomato esque to go like Sierra, Gani, Yan Hong. Really? So, oh, yeah. A lot, a lot of a lot of people even like um like uh. J Mac and Fate Member same because they, they played against the Kultons, right? That's not like his usual typical draft. And then after that, the second round with the Anvil ban was kind of like, huh? The pre ban? Yeah, I mean, it's not his draft, but it's it's like tomatoes, tomato drafts like that. Oh, okay, okay. I see. Bit, yeah. I see. So it was it was kind of interesting. There was some interest in there, but not interest in, in the right ways. Like, Anvil pre ban? Like, he's trolling, dude. Like, but who knows? Maybe he had a couple, he had a couple of drinks and he's just having some fun, right? Playing Legends Tournament? Whatever is right. Possible. Trill did use that throughout the season as a Gianna counter. Oh, really? Was the animal? So maybe he did his research, and a lot of us didn't know them. Oh, cool, cool. I I did actually see a lot more people uh, using animal, like a lot more drafts of animal animal coming out from people, and people actually like drafting here and there, like as a side pick. So it wasn't too shocking, but it was just re slightly shocking in the pre bands to see that, especially when there's a lot of LDs uh, on the board. But. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, very. The tournament was kind of boring. Go ahead. Sorry. It was kind of boring. Just it's really hard because all of them have Gianna besides True Whale. So the whole time you're drafting around Gianna, <laughs> pretty, pretty balanced unit, if I don't say so myself. Look but, at yeah. Thompson. Look at Thompson. <laughs> she she is one of the Look best tournament Thompson. units in the game. In tournaments, she's like oh, probably probably the second best. Who would you say first best? Nafthis. Nafthis. <laughs> if you don't, if really? you don't own a Nafthis, Nafthis is like one of the hardest units to play against in a tournament. Nafthis is very good. You know it's who's going to be the third? Who's going to be the third uh, strongest now coming up? When's the last time you played no, in that, that, that had well. Nafthis and Gianna tied Tyler? Yeah, I watch all the legend tournaments. You also... watch visually, I get it, but they also have Ragdoll. They also have a Jaeger. You know. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ragdoll gets stomped by like all those guys though. The Tian Lang is so painful. The Tian Lang Nephthys <laughs> together. Yeah, Tian Lang Nephthys is just like Ragdoll. Who is who is Ragdoll? Yeah, Ragdoll I think, I think <laughs> honestly it's the. It's called the the, the deflecting. Yeah. It's, it's called the deflecting effect. Yeah, Thompson's expertise. <laughs> yeah, uh, is that what you say to Nephthys? You say Gianna? Oh, but uh, do you know the Ragdoll? <laughs> do you know the Jaeger? <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. know the the Patter? <laughs> what are we talking about uh, Nephthys getting? Uh, I think it, I think Tian Lang was the. Uh... Was definitely like the the big shine this tournament. A lot of people brought up the Tian Lang, and those Despair runes killed it this time. Like nor normally, Despair runes in the, the Legend tournaments or even like the qualifiers have not always been the most relevant thing to see. But in this tournament, we just saw Tian Lang going ham on people. That S one Despair stun is so painful when it happens. Just when that happens to you on ladder too, and it can chain back to back. It's the worst feeling. And the defense break is just uh, the defense break is big. Uh, yeah. Scary man, scary. Yeah, Panda's, it, Panda's it, got it scary counters all ones. the a lot of the unfair stuff, you know, like the Ilianas and the uh, Ragdolls and stuff like that, right? Yeah, Hong as well. There you go. Yeah, because uh, even stops stuff like Yin Hong skill two. It's not just the skill three. There's like all the little things that it does really well. It's good against Sierra. It's good against Gianna. Yeah, and a lot of times it, against those drafts, actually, like Dino or Bird is very good. But you all of a sudden can't pick Dino or Bird anymore, you know. The only thing is, did you notice that how to plays uh, Nephthys and Tian Lang are not tuned? Yes. Like, oh yeah, Nephthys yeah, yeah. Than Tian Lang. I, I don't blame uh, how to play because Tian Lang has a mind of his own, you know. True, I guess. I mean, I think it's because he wants Nephthys closer to uh, Gianna, right? That's even more important. Yeah, exactly. he doesn't want the gap. Yeah, yeah. Does he draft? Does, does he draft Tian Lang that often though? Does it come against Ragdoll? Yes, like, he does. He did drop to pretty often. Wow, so he's choosing to pick it at that speed, right? But yeah, maybe... but the thing is, if you have a, if you're against Ragdoll with John and Nephthys Tian Lang, then Tian Lang is going to move before Nephthys and Weiss. Mm -hmm. I think that's the. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. 
And maybe it doesn't have to invest those types of despair runes, right? Or maybe that speed peg is kind of nut nut and it gives away too much stats to hit that speed. So that, yep. that would make sense though. That'd make a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome Legends Tournament. Uh, hopefully, you know, we, I mean, awesome discussion on the Legends Tournament. The Legends Tournament was a little bit lackluster in my opinion, but, uh, and I guess we kind of all agree, but looking forward to the next Legends Tournament. Hopefully uh, going to be more entertaining, more fun stuff uh, happening. And of course, looking more forward towards SWC. That's going to be happening in the next couple quarters here and hearing more about that uh, happening. Moving on to topic number three here. Topic Wait, can, I, three. can I add one more thing? Uh, no. Uh, moving on to top. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> of course you can add. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if they like, actually expand the, the, the legend tournament to like, maybe 16 players or something? Like Oh. Yeah, do whatever, do whatever, do whatever the die as well. Not just we, all... we actually yeah. talked about this. Yeah, yeah we did. Lucky. Yeah. yeah, we Last did. Right? We, we talked about yeah, we talked about expanding into like eight players, and then the top four have a buy or something, or uh, sixteen players top four have a buy. Yeah, sixteen players. Top I think four eight have would be good because there's already like top four that's kind of locked in already. Every single season, there's four players that are basically locked in. So we we also talked yeah. about um, expanding it to a best of five and a best of seven because then it shows who's a better player and who has better depth more than just who got really unlucky in two in one one of the two first matches yeah like double elimination as opposed to single elimination yeah, yeah. like but like how to play and and tomato get really really good after like like i mean they're already really good but they get even better after like the third or fourth match because they like they know what you're doing they remember all your speed tuning they know where your units sit so they're like okay now i can just play around that and it's it's pretty cool to watch yeah. 16 might be a lot because it's a long tournament. 16 is a lot, yeah. Yeah, 16 would be a lot if they want to extend it to multiple A two day event would be cool. Yeah, yeah two Saturday days. and a Sunday. Oh, and then you do the, uh, the so top four. Then there's a SWC too. I think that's what everybody's trying to play for, right? Yeah. I think they have all their, you know, beans in the in the, in the the basket for the SWC, right? That's where all their yeah. resources are going, I guess. But yeah, longer yeah, legends tournament because, would be nice. Yeah, because it feels like right now the legend tournament is basically like. They're just recycling the same players. It's pretty like gated, and because of the way our matchmaking works right now, like there's a lot of people in like top hundred and G three who have like good win rates against the top four people. So it's like it would be fun to see uh, other matchups and see some upsets and stuff. Yeah, like Snake got pretty close. Like he was five or six at the end. Yeah, it's an example of like fresh faces that almost get there, but they just can't because who is that? <laughs> the same people that are always going to have it if they want it. Who, who was that person that you named? Uh, in Skit. Skit. Oh, Skit. Skit. I, I was actually watching the um on the on the last like couple hour push the Belzebub guy. Was it Zir Zer the Vietnamese oh, guy? Yeah. He was close. Yeah. He was so close. He was so close. Yeah, and then I I was uh, I was sitting in a Discord yeah with a couple people and uh, everybody's like kind of doing RTS and whatnot and all I hear is ha ha like this Ken Baller ha ha I'm gonna gatekeep him and he just took seven points for the guy and I'm like oh, no. no he had a chance to get fourth like Ken just like ruined his juice Ken's like nope <laughs> so See, that's what's so sad though he's he's so close but oh, he's so close but like Dog Guy for example full just push up whenever he feels like it he's it wasn't really that close Dog Guy just chose to not do his wings you know. Mm -hmm. And so it made it seem a lot closer. He's just going to do whatever, like they'll do whatever amount of wings necessary to just get top four if they want to be in the legend tournament. And if not, they'll just not. I think there's um there's many ways they can approach it. They can even make it like a um like a bracketed system. Like you can have group stages. So what you can do is like if you want to get a big pool of players to play, you can have like an offline component and have maybe you know eight groups of four players play an offline tournament and play to get to, to the top of their group or first and second of their group and then the top two get out of their groups and then they do it like a top 16 tournament out of those players what that means is you get uh what 32 or oh, how many how many uh, you get yeah about 32 players participating um or even up to 64 and you can pick your top 16 from there that go into your top 16 finals it means you can get more players it makes it a bit more of a, a chase to be able to try and get to those top ranks as well and it does mean you get players that who are good, you know, but don't go hard at the grind to get to the top four, for example. Just get more players involved. What would you guys think if they did like a offline group pooling sort of system? I think it's just the logistical factor of planning it out yeah. and doing it. I like the idea though. 
getting more of the top players involved. I mean, the, the higher amount of top players that have the opportunity to be involved in a Legends tournament will pique a lot more interest for people to push up. And I would be curious to see some of the faces, right? Like, you know, Invictus and, and Obaba are saying some of the faces that would be in there that would upset these other players, right? Showing their skills off that, hey, you know, I got I got great skills to, you know, pick and ban and give my best chance, even though these guys got crazy runes or crazy LD nat fives, right? I could still beat them. Because there are players that don't have these, you know, monster pulls and rune pulls, and they de do decently well percentage-wise against some of these top players with those crazy runes. So, uh, I'd like to see some more of that. That would be a lot more entertaining, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> but some suggestions for them. We can elaborate this on the future, and uh, hopefully Comptos can do it. I also have been uh, on the side trying to plan out a tournament myself. Right, maybe starting off with like an exhibition tournament. I'd like to invite some players like Judas and stuff for some exhibition tournaments. And they may, maybe from there, uh, maybe if some of you guys are interested in helping me out, we can formulate a group together and we can uh, start maybe some kind of like, like we're saying, group stages, right? Something fun like that, that we can invite players and have entertaining, you know, matches every weekend for people to watch. And, you know, we can, I, I could try to put, uh, put together some prize pools and things that we can give away for these players. And might be nice, right? Might be some entertaining content for people to watch. But uh, we'll, we'll consider this more in the future. If you guys are watching this on the, uh, the YouTube channel, give us some suggestions and yeah, what you guys think about this down below. And yeah, we can elaborate and actually make this happen. All right, moving on to yeah, the next topic. Hard. Oh, go ahead. Oh, it's going to be kind of hard to throw a tournament at this time, especially like if you name people like Judas or... Like oh, because people want to hide their stuff? I mean, but yeah. it's it's going to be more exhibition style. So you don't have to uh, use the stuff that you would use in the regular yeah, tournament. The you tournament won't be as good, good to watch, you know, because they're not really like trying hard. True, true, I don't know, true, different, true. you can just rune different stuff, like it doesn't have to be, like you can still put the good runes on just sure. different units. Yeah, right, that's right. true. It's just a little bit harder. I, I agree what you're saying, Tom. I agree that's what you're true. saying though, Thompson. I didn't need to like uh, negate your point. I get it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it, what he's trying to say is that uh, don't invite me because I'm going to say no, is what he's trying to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to show his runes. <laughs> no, I think uh, a lot of people want to see like Thompson versus Judas. That's what I'm planning. That's match number one. That's exhibition number one, bro. I already sold selling tickets, bro. I got $1 million in pre-sales for that match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, moving on to topic number three here. Topic number three is about Special League, four star under. Um, any fun units or comps that you've been testing? Um, let's see, it instantly wants to love face smiles. I already know. Um, I saw yesterday. Uh, but uh, any fun comps, any fun units that you've been using, you've been testing, you've been smashing people with, um, as well as... Of course, you're going to talk about Mihos, which should be running rampant right now in Special League. But yeah, let's talk about Special League and some yep. of those units. Go ahead, Tyler. You can start. So I decided it was going to be fun to build a whole bunch of random units. I six-starred six units that are complete. People don't even know what this unit is half the time. I built Duamatef. I built Glenodon. I built Bajor. I built... I don't even know what else I built. You're playing uh, I built Digimon? Banaka. Are you Wait, so the second one has sounds like... Second one is that a, a lizard man? It is. Glenodon no. is the light lizard man in honor of Tectone. Okay. Yeah. In honor of Tectone, I decided okay. to start my light lizard man. So Fanaka is the light gargoyle. Um, he has AOE provoke, and when you hit him, um, they just they just buffed him. So he, when you hit him in gargoyle form, you get two you get two cooldowns, and then it can go past your limit. So yesterday when I was playing friendly matches with Sean, I got Sean Cichlid to minus nine cooldowns on a skill three. <laughs> <laughs> um, what the heck? I transmogged and built my map to go along with this too. And I'm using I can't remember, I can't remember what else I built. I built some weird stuff. Duamatev is the bearing? So I I thought about using bearing, but the biggest part that is hard for me is it's really difficult to use uh single strip single uh, buff strip. I need something that's like a full strip. Um but I've I've learned a lot about the issues of using gargoyles and I think I have a way that I would want to balance them in the future mm -hmm. to maybe make them not completely useless. Um, but besides Wait, that, what do you mean bearings AOE? Hmm? What do you mean bearings AOE? Uh, one, no, one no, buff, uh, he's one, one, one buff. It's one buff. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Not gotcha. multi buff. <laughs> yeah, Duamatef is uh, questionable. Questionable at best. So <laughs> the Fire Horus skill 2 is the defense and anti crit. His skill 1 scales on attack, and his skill 3 scales on defense. What is his skill 2 again? It's, uh, uh, it's, it's a 3 turn place. cooldown. Single target, stun, attack bar reduction. And that's it. <laughs> so basically Beretta skill 2? <laughs> Beretta skill Without 2 stun? With, a built, with a stun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, like a, uh, it's like a better light ager, pretty much. I would say. It, it better? I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, I would say better. Okay, like, the, the skill itself, the yes, is better. It's so the much better as well. Is better. 
than uh, like one. But yeah, the, yeah. the thing is, his yeah. scaling just like don't really make sense. It's like a defense based unit, but it only one skill scales on like he like is supposed to self buff himself. I don't know. He he's weird because like, he doesn't do a ton of damage if you build him a crit damage, and then it's like if you don't build accuracy, you just miss. So I'm not really sure like what I'm supposed to do with him. I think he's just bad. I think he's storage slot number seven eight seven. <laughs> but uh hey you know pulled him out and maybe now he's storage slot one two five you know what i'm saying so that's all good um Upgrades. bajor is interesting that unit is a little bit weird it's the blue skogel it has so it awakens into speed like on paper it's really good it awakens into yep. speed has a full a full strip into a three turn defense break on a like four turn cooldown or something a three turn cooldown and his skill two is a 100 percent attack bar reduction and it's irresistible if you have a debuff uh, so if he with def defense scaling damage though, right? Pardon? He just doesn't have defense scaling. No, he does have defense scaling damage on both skills. On both skills. Oh, nice. Just not S one though, right? It's not S one. No. Yeah, that's okay. Um, the problem is to do like any damage at all, you need like a lot of setup. And I feel like his skill two is okay, but with the cooldown of it, it's not that great overall. I mean, he's a three star, so his base stats aren't like insane or anything, right? And then I built. Driller? driller i built driller yeah because it's fun to watch him smack people six times <laughs> so he, he's the one that he's so the one that olivia? i used to kill garo he kills garo all the time he kills through triana passive too do you have an olivia built yeah i have a 270 uh 277 olivia on will violent will okay. it's not the greatest i kind of wish like, i think if it was like 280 it would probably work better in top 1000 but i feel like everyone's just so fast like everyone just runs two speed leads and two units that are like 315 speed yeah, like, you can't I, really go in between. You gotta either have like a counter to people are gonna try to contest first turn, yeah. or like you're taking first turn with really good swift. Yeah, a lot of the I don't know, they're the units are weird. It's it's fun to just mess around with something different and not, you know, sweat really hard, but I I have yeah. realized that Duamatef is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. So it some interesting units in there. Um do you are you seeing a lot of mihos though as you're drafting and you're playing? Unfortunately, oh yeah, I, I pick Emacity first, so people pick Miho again. People pick Miho and Lauren against me almost immediately. Mm, I see. In in lower Spirit ranks, people just pick Miho. What he got? He froze. You cut out. I no. lost him. He got banned. He got banned, guys. He's banned. <laughs> yeah. He said too much. You can't say Miho on. He said he said too much. Come to us. Doesn't want to nerf Miho. Doesn't want to nerf Miho. Doesn't want to hear it. They got bad. Spoke about bad about Miho. It wasn't in the balance patch, and they cut him off. Let's see what happens when you talk trash about Miho. Look at that. You even get destroyed IRL. Check that out. All right. I'm sure his his internet is something disconnected, but oh, I'm back. Oh hell yeah. Hey. Oh hey. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I read Jamatev skills again, and I just died a little bit on. <laughs> um, all right talking about miho yeah i mean it's just a really like lauren lauren is really good against you and then on top of that the triana is just really hard to kill because i'm not using copper or bulldozer i'm trying really hard to use like the, the i'm limiting myself to three meta units my three meta units i'm willing to use are olivia amacity and triana i'm not willing to use anything else i saw you meet use miho don't lie to me I picked it once. I saw it. I you it used once. it. Kidding, that's right. just not even <laughs> once. once. You don't know the same? Yeah, not I even once. I thought he would ban the Miho. Nothing happens. I, I don't Finaka see, sir. Instead. And nothing happens. I see that. I was salty. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so interesting units uh, being built and created. Anybody else uh, trying any fun units? I, I really want to see people use the Fire Barb more to counter those Mihos. I think Fire Barb is nuts. He's a great unit. But Especially I don't meals. think Fire Barb could be really used because like it's really hard to make him slightly tanky, and then there's so many vigors around, you know. Just put him with your Aegir set. Just put him with your Aegir set. That's fine. Sure. Yeah. It, it'll, it'll nuke any Miho unless somebody's doing a heavy HP Miho, right? Just boom, dead. Doesn't care about Triana. Doesn't care about Hodam. Doesn't care about anything. They just touch it, it dies. But yeah, it's it it's it, it yeah it's it's it doesn't do much more than that. So you're definitely <laughs> right. Yeah. <clears throat> Because I think for the most part, if you're getting attack buff like with a Fran or something like that, it's going to kill a Miho no matter what. It doesn't have to have defense break. It doesn't need any setup. It doesn't matter if you have will or whatnot. It's just going to kill a Miho right away. Uh, what about Ayunu? I've seen a lot of people trying to build Ayunu, and some people are telling me that, hey, it's working pretty good, at least in four star against Miho. What are you guys' thoughts on uh, Ayunu now having branding, right? The newest member to the branding, I mean, not branding, Oblivion community. Tanaka's really good against Ayunu. He resets his cooldowns immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, just, I really want to use Fadaka, but I just feel like he's so bad. 
You're not wrong. <clears throat> no, nobody tested him out. Oh, everybody thinks he's actually just right, yeah. paper garbage. No, no, I think I think I think the balance. It's all about the immunity good. units, man. So like, if they have immunity, he it can't is. Really do much. It so. is Invictus. Is yeah, I think Ayun is mostly like siege siege duty right now. Mm -hmm. More controlled. If people are bringing like Iliana. Yeah, if people are bringing like Iliana, and if they don't have Iliana, they'll have the Fran and then Triana too. So. Oh, Triana, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about how Iliana is just like and then like armor breaker with oh the... and completely like why even bother using a Wusa? like Iliana is just amazing and then in four star league there's just nothing that even compares to her not even close yeah you see how broken she is oh, in regular RTA crazy. and you get to four star and she becomes like like Iliana X two like the awakening like, form of Iliana no choose, like <laughs> you, don't, you don't have a choose so what are you gonna do uh, good. hey man I want one so bad more than I, I traded my Laura I'd say. You you're starting to figure out why I was bitching about Laura, like Dude, how I I try I gave her an honest try and uh, I, well I gave her an honest try for like two seasons, bro. Yeah, yeah. I brought it's it to tournament effectors. all the way it's in the Taiwan. Effectors, Dude, he man. even has an Artemil. If he can't make the defense buffing unit work with a good defense, unit, <laughs> I'm just like, not good enough, man. You know that Laura is not good enough. <laughs> Dude, um, sometimes she doesn't strip one buff. Anyway, don't even talk about Laura, but yeah, I think Laura and Jogun could use like a strip and like attack bar boost. I think Joe Gunn needs it too, just like Laura. Either that or just buff her harmful effect rates. So at least she's doing like, I've had matches where she's not even activating the strip. It's not going to resist it. The strip just doesn't even activate. Oh yeah, so, it's like, really bad. It's like 30% yeah. chance three times, but then- it, Is it really that high? <laughs> <laughs> well, 30% yeah, is pretty, pretty low. low for three times, right? Like if it was like something like Lauren's, I think that'd be better. So if they increase the activation rate on it, I think you might be able to find more potential uses for it. Like a fifty percent activation rate or with three tries will be a lot more consistent. And I think it is fifty. Or, or keep it the same. Oh, is it fifty? Right? Or keep it the same, but oh. it goes up to fifty. But um, wait, it, that's like, so shit. Then if it's model. still not working good, huh? Lauren works. No, Why don't she work? Just keep it the same. Keep it the same, but to make it strip all. If they want to just do like the same activation rate, that's what I'm People saying. People saying it's 60%. Wait, that's so good on paper. Wow. That you must be really that garbage then. Because that sounds great on paper. Three tries at 60%. What? That's Lily Lauren. For one buff though. Have you guys one uh, used oh, um, one buff. Have Not you guys tried buffs. the yeah. Fire Art Master? He's kind of like has the same syndrome as Laura. Like the skill one. Dude, if he gets resisted, he yeah, gets, he gets resisted, resisted a lot you just, like, and you just lose the whole match. That, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Four turn cooldown. He, he's it. not even. It's like you might as well use a segment, right? Because at least she can recover. Armor break, glancing, attack break, everything. Yeah. You know, her third skill is like never on cooldown. So the issue with all the like strippers nowadays is that yeah. because of the way they buff the strippers, any stripper yes. that doesn't, any any stripper that doesn't debuff, as well, is just yep. not strong enough, right? Like so, so yeah, Laura is like a strip, and then you buff, right? Jogong is a buff, a strip, and then a buff. Where Chiwu is just like a strip, and then the debuff is the attack bar reduction. Where Triton is the attack bar reduction. Yes. Where Tiana yeah. at least like gives you attack bar, right? The Wunsa, the yeah, the Wunsa as well. Yeah. You have all the you have these different things, these units that like strip and do nothing else. Like that's why Clara is good, right? Because she strips and stuns. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you run Laura on Swift, she doesn't stun on skill on skill three. If you run Jogong on Swift, he doesn't stun on skill three. So there's yeah. way less pressure. I think uh, it's just the way you play with them as well. I think Fire Artmaster is a lot better than uh, than Laura. It is, for sure. It is. Absolutely. And, and it just requires a different type of uh, speed tuning as well. Like it's better than Laura. The push down. Yeah, it's better think... than Laura because uh, attack buff is better than defense buff. Yeah, it's, and it's also like 100%. I think the issue is like, Chi has the speed lead. I think that's the biggest thing for him because even the pushback is going to be super unreliable if you. Uh, gonna rely on that so i think it's the speed little, like setting him apart from uh, every other aoe strip because he's like the most utility he's the speed with the most utility right now, utility right now with like wedget and uh, will young maybe just give laura a speed okay, lead. Huh? there you go yeah then she would be uh really good oh yeah because i mean i'd honestly rather use gemini <laughs> yeah that's i think i'll mess your draft better with the speed lead if i had a 24 speed lead for just for arena or whatever or whatever it is um it would definitely mend well with the uh with the, the comps you can run it with for sure it's just hard to pick her early man because i don't want to force myself to take a vanessa but if i take laura early i don't have any other speed leads in my comp so i just kind of for i kind of give up turn one too easy so mm -hmm. 
that's the main issue and with her. I think it's like uh, AOE attacks that strip and buff are going to be way more reliable than uh, strips that actually need to debuff as well. So like if you have Fire yeah. Art Master, it's going to do what it should way more often than Chi or uh, Gemini. So I feel like that's important to uh, to note as well. Right. But the other one is have higher any... risk, higher return, right? The debuffs are more beneficial for you or more, more favorable in your match than the you know the 100% the buffs that you get, right? The attack bar reductions can win you the match where defense break from Gemini's can set you up, right? So higher risk, not as debuffs consistent. Are, the higher risk for higher reward is so good, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, debuffs are so strong. Compared, like buffs are good, but only certain buffs are really that relevant. Mm. Um, have any of you guys tried the Water String Master? Um, I know a couple yeah. people oh, using yeah. her plus Clara yes. on really fast speed sets, and then picking them as the last two against Cleavers. Oh yeah, I forgot about her. She's like kind of nuts, isn't she? Clara. Four Star Special League would definitely would be kind of nuts. Yeah, she's actually nuts. You just get, you go you have double speed lead. If someone picks Cleave, because you can tell when someone's cleaving right off the bat, right. they start picking Cleave. You pick two speed leads, and then you pick Clara and uh, what's her name again? The water, uh, song, I can't remember. Right. Song Sol. Uh, song Sol. Yeah, song Sol. Yeah. You just yeah. pick those two together, and then it's like, okay, well, do you fight the do you fight the Clara or do you fight the guy who can't buff? Like denies all your buffs. Mm, that's true. That's true. I I definitely think that that there's a hard limit on that where that stops being useful. Probably around like the bottom of G2, you probably can't use that anymore. But well, I, think yeah, you can I, think... Really, I think you can use that really, really well up until that point. And it's the same thing with like Miho and Miho and Mina. Like if you pick, if you can take a Lucia, Fran, Miho, Mina, you can just easily make your way to G1 with no effort. Because it's, it's really hard for people to fight those units. You pick that and then like Vigor or Triana. Or like any any of those six units, maybe plus a Verd and you're good. You're not going to get all six units, man. No, if no, you but you can, like get, Vigor, you can get like three or four the of them. If you pick the Fran, yeah. they pick the Triana yeah. and the Vigor. Um, has anyone tried the uh, with Mermaid? Yeah, that's what I was gonna talk or, about. I did a few fights in uh, like Noob Room. I, I didn't fight in nuts. Four Star. I don't know. They changed their skills. It used to be previously that the second and third, the second and third hits used to do both armor break and reset. Now the second hit does the armor break and the third hit does the reset. There's no more double chance. Oh Although yeah. She has, yeah. So I think she's more chance good. to get resisted, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, it's back to like Anoki, pretty much. Well, so, they buffed her to the sense where she actually has the right harmful effect rate, because before her harmful effect rate wasn't 100, so it was pretty bad. Like, it was like 75 ship, or something, yeah. and then it was like, if you missed the strip, you did absolutely nothing. The shield and base speed, though, are also pretty nice. Yeah. Her like, she has a better base speed. Yeah. I think as a support, she's not a bad, bad choice. Yeah, I heard, I've been hearing a lot of people using her, and I mean, obviously, I can probably say Guild Wars Guild Siege is going to be great, but 4-star especially, I've been hearing good things uh, about people using her and saying she's really, really solid. So I'd like to see I mean, if that actually... Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 you're good, you're good. But I I'm, I'm curious no, no, to see no, if that'll good. trickle in towards uh, regular RTA, because a lot of people are saying, oh, it might be actually pretty good against like Terranese and whatnot as well, right? Being able to, you know, use against that in your drafts mm. as another option. Yeah. So... Uh, I don't think yeah, against yeah. Terranese, but it's going to be good in... Uh... Uh, uh, go, uh, go ahead, Wabu. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I don't think, like, against Tavanis is not going to be that good. Because she doesn't do too much in her kits. It's mostly just, like, her first turn impact. But it's definitely, like, a super good unit into Cleave. And it's also an answer to, uh, like, Chiwu Genhathor, which is, like, the most prominent uh, Genhathor comp. So I think that's going to be yeah, uh, pretty that... nice. How about yeah, you, uh, this... um, I, I think yeah, she's going like... be... Uh, go ahead, yeah. Go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. Oh, or or yeah, go. Go you can finish finish up a bottle. Sorry about that. I was gonna say Akia. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, like Akia is better for the long game. I was gonna say Akia is probably better. <laughs> Wait, I think everyone's lagging. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> lagging. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> lagging. So when I when I when I'm indicating, everybody's <laughs> lagging by like half a second. <laughs> That was the most awkward we've ever had it. That was so good. Okay, uh, let's That's let's... the cringe moment of the podcast. I love it. Re reset. Reset. Okay. Well, Bob will complete statement into Andrew and to uh, Tyler. Go ahead. Go to Bob. You can Wait, finish your statement. Me? Okay, so I think Ark is going to be better for like the long game because all her skills are so efficient. Meanwhile, like Cichlid, her first turn impact is insane and she has like the base bit as well. So if you're fighting like a Ganath or Chibu really relies on the first turn, then you can just disrupt them instantly, and then you, uh... It's not gonna be, like, solid to bring Gana out or Chiwu as much. Because you can counter it with Cichlid and 33 lead. And it's gonna be super for them to actually, uh, outspeed. Okay. Um, so, yeah. How about you, Andrew? What are you saying? 
Oh, I was also just saying she could be another um, unit to help counter, you know, Triana. You can kill through Triana by setting up the uh, the strip into defense break multi hit. So that's kind of how I'd I'd see it. That's true as well. And yeah, you yeah, yeah, probably yeah, get. Yeah, you probably get better chance to get a lot against a lot of Trianas, especially if they don't have any will as well, right? So you're gonna have a lot of opportunities to set up against those Nem ones. Yeah. Yeah. So now maybe people are gonna lean more towards what we've been seeing a little bit more often, which is you know not just the Nem Trianas, but the hundred res will Trianas, right? Maybe that's gonna be more predominant now for those reasons. So yeah. Uh, how about you, Tyler? Uh, what were you saying? I think the Cichlid will be really good against people who use Molong. I think Cichlid will be really strong against like the Molong. Uh, People who pick like Molong, Bulwark, Molong, Ovelio, and stuff like that. Like once the regular league comes around, it's just another option into that. Because the shield is pretty strong too. Like the shield is pretty big. Like you can either, if, if you miss your strip, you can pre-shield. You, know, you, you just have options between the stuff. And her cooldowns are low enough that it's relevant. Right. Okay. Um, I also think that Cichlid into Josephine is pretty cool. Because you can reset her first turn with a high base speed. A bunch of fun things. I, I'm going to build a Cichlid because I hate Josephine. And that mm. is like the only reason that I want this unit to be built and max skilled. Okay, interesting. Uh, I think that's a, that, that's a really good concept as well. So that, you know, Baba was saying how it's good against Getty Hathor, but I guess it might be good with Getty Hathor. <laughs> right? I don't or think so that much. Because now you're running into uh, like a buffed Fire Monkey if you go with Triple Wind. I think, oh yeah, yeah true, actually gonna true, struggle that's with scary. It, so. That's true. Um, what about Blushin? Yeah, what's the uh, the thoughts on that? Any tests done yet from you guys, or anybody seeing that being used? We're watching. We're watching Taki use it. Is his on one hundred yeah. resist? Does anyone? Yeah, does anyone know? I, I've seen it. I'm just like I swear everything. It just resists everything. So that's pretty cool. So he does that for the the passive cooldown, right? Yeah, he does hundred rest because you have to like put it down, and there's so many things you need to go through. So like, if you don't have stuff at max act, then you're gonna fail, and then you uh, then you get bombed. He's pretty nice though, because he gets the built-in uh, 50 accuracy on his bomb, so like he can yeah. actually be really stat efficient. Yep. And, and you're only rooting good. for like 85, yeah. right? You're not going for 100 anyways, so I mean, it's only you need 35%. Like, you need like 85. nothing. Yeah, it's just like basically like your innate accuracy runes. That's it, and you're good. <laughs> you hit it. Yeah. What do you think are the best rune sets for it? Mm, I mean, you need will for sure. I have mine on fatal, because you don't really need like violent or despair or anything. And I don't think you really want Nemesis on him either, for RTA. Because in that are case, they can actually target you down, and then you move before some other units moved. So, yeah. But are you using it as Countercleave, like a niche pick just for Countercleave, or in like a regular? I mean, you can use it as a Countercleave, but you can also use it against teams that don't really have an answer to it, and don't have immunity. Because they're going to have to like pump it down for their second turn, but then they can't really do it. Because of its uh, so you, passive. So you would say you'd rather build him over like a Malaka? Yeah, for sure. I think it's a better turn two unit than uh, Malika. So, what do you think yeah. about him compared to yeah. Dover then for that kind of setup? You think Dover's still better, or do it's you think different Dover's still better? Because because Dover <laughs> is uh, like way more control, but can actually kill the Dover. So I think Blushin might be better for some cases, and I think like Gani and uh, Blushin would be really good as well. Because then you can I'll just think... refresh the revive as well. Yeah, I think gotta... Dover's gonna be better if the game drags out for a bit longer compared to that turn one sort of play that you'd get from the the from the pollution. Can, can we all address that yep. he's, he's never going to get his real name and he will always be known as Blushin? That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you name a kid. Yeah, you come with, you name a kid's like Timothy and then he always just calls Tim for the rest of his life. I was like, damn it. Should have just named him Tim. I mean, <laughs> Blushin for the rest I, of his life though. <laughs> I think it's fine as long as people start calling like Blushin, like wind Blushin. Or like no, yellow no. Blushin, I guess. <laughs> wind Blushin. <laughs> then we're, uh, it's never yeah. happening. It's never happening. <laughs> yellow Blushin. Oh man, Blushin is just like an easy thing to say. Like no one wants to say Sion or Shion or like, because then you like debate like what is it? Like do I pronounce it this way? Do I pronounce it that way? Just call it Blushin. It's easier. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue, right? Blushin rolls off a lot easier. But yeah, I agree. Uh, I think Dover's still the, like the more dominant bomber overall, and typically people usually just build Dover like really tanky anyways. So that like, the long drag games definitely is, is is in his benefit, right? He's a lot more controlling. So there are differences between. Uh, I them. think they're both like better than each other in. Uh... Yeah, I think it's almost like apples sure. oranges kind of situation. You know what I mean? Like where you would use them and how you would use them are like yeah. different, even though they both put bombs, right? Obviously. So, 
We're gonna see how this transpires. Yeah, with uh, Blue Shinier, he, make it, he, he can make a name for himself as a staple four star. Yeah, to summon the next staple four star to have in your in your pool or pick. Uh, I mean, definitely uh, for Siege, not RTA. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely Siege for sure. It's definitely yeah. gonna be built up. Bombers are awesome in Siege, especially because anything that can increase your four star tower capabilities are great. Because we know majority of us hate four star towers, or, or I hate four star towers. I should say for everybody. I mean, anything that you can use as a second turn, that second turn unit that has some safety to it is great because you run out of those speed counters pretty pretty quickly, unless you just have a lot of swift sets to, I mean, a lot of, um, you know, speed counters that you can throw around. Yeah, or if you have a lot of mana and you just want to move your runes around, because <laughs> I know there's people that do yeah. that for Siege, right? 24-7, uh -huh. who cares about yeah. mana? Just swap the swift set off into the other unit that hasn't been used yet. So it's viable as well. Okay, Special League is under full effect right now. We'll see people continue to have more fun. Like I always said, Special League should be a place for people to test things, have fun with it, and hopefully CompTOS does more, you know, rules and things in the future for Special League that people can enjoy because it should be definitely be that exhibition, that, 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 that dummy RTA mode for us to have fun with. All right, moving on to one of our last topics here. Topic Are you playing four. Special League? I, would, I, Me? I was going to say as well, though. Remember from last week? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. Okay, I mean, I'll answer for a second. Uh, I was yeah, going to say, uh, um, I, oh, go ahead. On the subject of... He's on a delay. We, we, we found He's the guy lying. on the delay. We found the man on the delay. This guy, run, yeah, yeah, hey, I, I will let you know. Feed, please feed Timmy, your hamster. Yeah, because he's not he's currently not running fast enough that you're going to to keep up, you know. But anyways, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, go ahead and pick this. I'm I'm the one that's halfway around the world. How come you're the one lagging? Because <laughs> he's, he's, on. the, he's the one that's a, he's a student. Guys, True. if you're to Twitch Prime, go to Andrew's stream, Twitch Prime. He needs to upgrade his internet. Help, help a boy out. Come on, guys. Wait, how does that upgrade the internet? Is that like campus internet? Wait a uh, minute. No, I'm at home. It's just my parents don't want to buy better internet. Yeah. See? If we if we Twitch Prime him enough, he can buy new internet. It's also, I'm I'm on a laptop still, so. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. State, state your point. Go ahead. You're good. Go ahead, me. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you, you. Yes, yes. Invictus. I was gonna say, let's not forget last season's special league where they did the streaking thing. Can we add that to the next RTA season, please? Oh, like, is that live? Forget about is that, that still live right oh. now or what? Did, did, yeah, it's still it, on. But for just special league, right? That's for special, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd like to see that added to the regular RTA season because I think that without them having to adjust like the point system at all, if they just imp improve the streaking, that helps generate some more points. Because you saw, like at the end of this season, people were still at the same area as they were in the last one. Right. and yeah and that's that's kind of fun and kind of a a, a skill-based thing as well right to be able to streak because it's not easy to go on a streak your opponents technically i think the algorithm it makes it we agreed upon it that it does make your opponents harder right the more you lose the worse your opponents they usually give you the more you win the better opponents they usually give you as well yeah it takes longer to queue up so it would be nice to see people gain points for um those reasons with streaking i think it's maybe they're just testing it one more time through this special league before they make it live right uh, but go back to Tyler's question. Um, I was talking about it on stream. I don't know yet if I want to do Special League because I'm kind of lazy to move my runes uh, because I had to move them mid-season. And because I, what I did at the beginning of last season was I messed everything up because I was doing, I, we, we did so many tests, man. Test videos on like 2A, Marshall Cats and whatnot. I moved everything all around for like RTA. We made a bunch of videos and I was like, I'm so lazy to move it back. Finally moved it back, you know, so we could do some RTA before the end of the season. But I don't know if I want to move things to four-star units because if you don't move them, you won't be able to uh rank up after a certain amount because you have to have like your best swift sets and vile sets on certain units or you're just gonna have a much tougher time but i'll consider it yeah to uh make some fun units why is there any units you challenging me or like requesting me yeah, to run build? five run five uh drunken masters and see if you can get you one i have them all built actually to be honest i i know you have them all built that's why <laughs> i want to see it okay i mean uh, if you don't want to do it i'll do it for you <laughs> like i'll yeah. play it <laughs> all right give me give me some suggestions on uh uh the way to ruin the I mean, it's so nice that one it costs nothing to ruin. Right? The, the water one boosts attack, attack bar. bar. Yeah, a small amount, though. I think it might be 10%. Yeah, it might Doesn't be 10%. Matter. Yeah, Mao Zedong is his, uh, his old school name, <laughs> is what we used to call him. Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, did you guys know that Gildong strips on skill 3? Yes. Yeah. And I'm a yeah I completely like forgot. Somebody was like, are you using budget Shiho? And I was like, yeah. who the fuck is budget oh, Shiho? Did you guys see the Shiho animation? It's it's doesn't no different, isn't it? Yeah. No, the one of the transmog hits like six times. The, you one of the transmog it. does? Yeah, the one with the uh, hat. What's the hat? The one that has no, the, that's the, a scam. the clones, right? The Wait, clones? Dude, that, that thing was no, already the slow. clones one just go blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah, the clones one looks like it for. Oh, are you talking the one that just keeps dashing forward, and he dashes six uh, the times? Oh, the one that teleports and attacks. The one first time. one. Uh, you mean the I one on the, the one. Yeah, yeah, the, the first one. one. Yes, on the cloud one. Cloud one. Oh, the cloud, the one. cloud one. Yeah. Ah. The lame one. <laughs> Wait, isn't that the one he keeps appearing? Well, in now it's not the lame one. Now it's the yeah, cool I guess, one. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Now it's not lame. Now I gotta know if I have it. I mean, I have I have that one for my uh, fire monkey actually, and not the new one. Ah, uh, I see. You know, fun fact. Yeah, fun fact. I bought all the Monkey King Trasmogs that first that first set of Trasmogs. I bought that before having any uh, Monkey Kings back in the day. Like back in the day, like when the that was one of the first Trasmogs. That's why it was the Monkey King one. One of the first I remember was that uh, that cloud one. I think. Yeah. Definitely they're a big upgrade over the base skin. What's that? They're a big upgrade over the base skin, so I see why. Yeah, I didn't have any though, but then I proceeded to eventually get them. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe that's why I think it's lame because it's on like the fire monkey and I have the other one on uh, the water. Bro, like almost any skin on the fire monkey is lame, bro. You know what the fire monkey does? Yeah. It does nothing, bro. <laughs> I mean, like the animation, sorry, skill animation doesn't do anything, so it's pretty boring. All right, let's move on to that. Uh, let's move on to that topic then. Uh, next topic is any testing done from this last balance patch on any units of interest, monkey kings, oh, things like that. Is a big topic I, here. I do. I have the. I tested the main unit that everyone was wondering about because yeah, last time on stream I was saying like Tyler was saying if there's a stun, does the uh, Barbara fall off and has a stun on? Yeah. And I was like, of course it does. And you're like, it technically shouldn't. And then uh, I tested it, and when it falls off the mound, the stun stays on her. It's so bad, dude! I figured that out the other night. We were uh, we were playing some have RTAs. You guys, and then, have like, you guys had like a OP uh, unit got nerfed before? And you know, you kind of feel bad. Yeah. 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 Yep. Have you guys ever had a bad unit nerfed? You feel even worse. No, because you don't I feel value so that bad, bad for unit. your Narsha, dude. Exactly. <laughs> I talked about that it's yesterday so on stream right too. Somebody like, asked me what the worst nap I was, and I said I think it's Narsha now with the nerf. There's yeah. sometimes like uh, Hathor, right? And um, if Narsha doesn't do anything, like doesn't strip or whatever, she doesn't move the whole game. Like, yeah. So, yeah. They should just remove the inability effects. I think harmful effects is fine. Is that what you guys would agree? Like, are we under the opinion that it should be? That's what that we thought it was. And we were already assuming that it was going to be, you know, pretty substantial of a nerf to them and change to them. But now with the inability in in involved, it's kind of like, bruh. <laughs> it's an, what? It's in it's in stun and a harmful effect. I like weakening effects are like the attack buffs, yeah, glancing stuff. Yeah, there's weakening, so there... and, weakening and and um, inability sit under the harmful effect bracket. Yeah. Oh. I I know that because I'm a con user, and I know she gets stack if there's a stun on the opponent. Oh, so the the, the yeah. water griffin. Ah, oh, I see. I see that counts. So what 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 is inability then? What what is it will specifically say inability. like inability effect. Inability it, it, effect denies you a cooldown when you take a turn. So sleep, stun, and freeze. Right, but it's also classified under harmful is what we're saying as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. So freeze is also harmful. Effect. It's like they're both, everything's harmful then. Everything's harmful effect. So everything is harmful yep. effect, but not everything is inability. That, there we Correct. go. There yep. we go. Okay. Okay. It makes it more clear for a lot of people, including myself. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, they need to take that off. And then um, I think Beast Riders would still be um, not in a good shape. Yeah. Um, I actually like think that should stay on uh, Beast Riders. Uh, I think it should stay as well. Wait, 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 wait. Which Beast Riders you have, Obabo? I have Wind One. Okay, now I understand why. Okay, continue. No, like, like Wind One was the Beast Rider that, that got nerfed the hardest out of all of them. And I don't care. Mm, yeah, water because, one too, but because yeah. wind one, I th I think what they wanted to do with the wind one was to reduce ATB to twenty five. That was the idea, but since she's like a first turn unit, the ATB overfills, so you only get like forty percent pushback, like effectively, because you don't push them all the way to twenty five, which I think is what they wanted. Oh, it, it depends. Did you just say while I was gone that wind one was the one that got nerfed the hardest. Okay, yeah. all right, stop the it. We know our show. One, the okay. one that got <laughs> the hardest. Excuse me? Oh, rip, here we go. No, like, like light was just worse than wind before. Yeah. Wind was still got nerfed harder than uh, light. Wait, so are you saying, are you saying the difference from where they started to where they ended? The yeah. wind one got the biggest change, but the light, yeah. he's not saying the light one isn't bad. It just Oh, oh yeah, okay. The, the light, light one started here bad. and yeah, ended here. Yeah, wind one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wind yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I, but, I can yeah. dig that. Yes, because right. a 50% nerf to a unit with, you know, 10, let's just say a number 10 is a lot compared to a unit that has 0. 0.1, okay? Proportionally. Like two times, two times zero is still zero, right? I see the math. All right, all right. I'm a little sensitive right now. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> but continue on, continue on, Mabo. But yeah, I think Narsha could get something else, but I think overall the nerf is pretty good, because if you look at most of them, they have like really strong kits, and they just have like a fourth skill that is a revive. I think it was way overline, and I think this is way better now. Mm, I think their kit... Yeah, we'll have to pretty... see the... Oh, you go first. Yeah, we'll just have to see how it is next season, because I could just be saying BS. But I think they're still super good units. I think they're I think their kit was really predicated on um, attack, like them being able to really skimp out on a lot of HP and defense. And now yeah. they're a lot harder to rune. And um, yeah. And I think that's fair. Because it's weird to have like a unit that can go so much attack for free. Yeah. And then have it like punish it for yeah. focusing it. So I think it's a huge nerf though. In my, I think you have to all in now. You have to either be like all damage or like way way harder on the like bruisery hp side i i think there you can't go way way damage i think their only way to go is probably like more tankier i yeah, don't know do you... i don't have a savannah but i still like, think there'll be people I'm... who yolo with it though right like there'll be a lot of yolo comps out there what do you maybe, maybe not you're, you're probably right because they're like they're so squishy that if you don't survive one hit you're just you're fucked yeah well what the savannah you... one you can't help it because she's got to have the uh the attack power so you're gonna have not to necessarily attack slot. I've uh, seen, Savannah, I've... you could kind of build it like uh, attack and attack before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like an Anvil kind of well, building, yeah. right? Yeah. So we're you think we're gonna see less crit damage on Savannah? I think we're gonna see Probably, more like yeah. double attack or attack HP builds. I think that might have already been like the better build to have like very high ac on uh, Savannah instead of going crit damage build. It's mm. it's a lot easier when you don't have like super super crazy high quality runes to go like speed attack HP or speed attack attack because then you can get a violent build that's like speed tuned above your Ganny, where if you like try to do that with crit damage you end up just missing too many stats. Like right. if you have really really good runes you could do it, but like for most of the people like that I was I was using their account or I was playing on their account or like I was learning their shit, they were like G one or like sometimes in G two it's like it was impossible to get their savannas fast enough with high enough accuracy if it wasn't speed attack attack. Mm. Right. Yep. What about some and of the, I, the players that have been, uh, you know, switching? I've been seeing a lot more uh, violent barbers. I'm sure some of you guys are running as well. Violent barbers. Do you think people are gonna lean more towards a violent barber now so that they can get the stats uh, and correct stats appropriate, right? To try to do the same. I think. Yeah, because now I mean, Swift. Depend. Sorry. <laughs> because I feel like oh, yeah. Swift, you're trying to take that first turn, right? So you're, you're using a lot of your resources and your stat potential to get speed. Right, but now that you need, you know, still want to do enough damage, have the utility, and you know, be tankier, maybe the violent build is a little bit more appealing for people than that swift build. Yeah, but the thing is, like, speed also lets you take a turn, so it it also helps, like, uh, for a unit to be effective, even if it's like super squishy. So, mm. I think Bava should still be mostly swift. Yeah, for some Bruiser players, maybe, uh, maybe violent, I guess. Because I also feel maybe violating out of the inabilities or the, uh, the the harmful effects might be more of a factor now and more of an opportunity now since, you know, you, you don't want to be debuffed anymore, right? It's also hard to get uh, Barbara on a swift set with uh, that much uh, efficiency. Because, like, you know, everyone has the speed, crit damage, attack, but now you need crit, speed, crit damage, attack, HP defense. You know, it's going to be pretty tough to ruin a Barbara on swift. Yeah. With accuracy, because I'm feel I'm feeling like more like I want to move my violent down my 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 vile set on Barbara and move her down and then just put the king of turn one back to Daphnis. You know what I mean? Because I, I obviously I mean I don't have a lot of sets, right? I'm not I'm not super deep, so I might just give the the juicy set again on Swift back to the Daphnis and just have it on him and then move it down. But the appealing thing, thing about Swift on Barbara though is it gives your whole your whole team that turn one so i sometimes I, I wonder how much it nerfed it because they nerfed the amount of damage you output right and the amount of damage you output affects how much yeah. attack gauge you get so i wonder how much uh that is right assuming that's a two you're, two buff. That you're very rarely stripping two buffs so 35 percent ignore versus 25 percent ignore is really not that significant hmm. um you'll see it more significantly when you're looking between 50 and 70 or like when you're seeing 75 versus 100 obviously the even 20 percent did non ignore is massive right but generally, you see the biggest attack bar boost from Barb skill 3 when you're fighting like a Wusa, right? They Wusa and then you skill 3, or they're using a Fran and then you skill 3 the two buffs away. But before that, you're only getting like 12% attack bar, unless you're doing like insane damage to like a really squishy unit. Like if you're skill 3 a Perna or something Daphnis. on first turn, or yeah, or sometimes even a Daphnis, then it's very rare to see more than like 15% attack bar on the first turn. So you're losing maybe only a couple of percent is what you're saying. Your team is... yeah. Yeah. No, you're good, Andrew. That's, that's, my, that's my bad on that one. <laughs> but okay. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, even if the rest of your team, though, is still, um, like, what, 270, 280 sets, 
on like violent even like some 260 units can still move next if you can get like a 15 20 percent boost so yeah and i think i think barbara she wasn't really picked for her like ignore defense third skill i might be wrong yeah. since i don't have her but that was not why you picked her because if you pick her into that and you're relying on like that act check alone i think it's more of like the first turn boost and like how good her uh defense break one shot is She's, so. she's also really good in opportunities where you don't have to use your skill 3 on turn 1. Like, if you yeah. don't have to use your skill 3 on turn 1, you skill 2, and then you skill 3, and then you have skill 2 again. And it's just like, you're guaranteed to kill 2 units really fast. Like, her her base I mean, speed just makes her still viable. Like, yeah, her base speed is just going to be great. Without yeah. speed lead. What, what, what is her base? Like, 108? 108. Yeah, it's, that's that's the nice part still. It's, it's true. It's very All true. Them if you're are fighting Breeze Man, and you go, like, show. Vanessa, Barbara... As your opener, that's so flexible. It's just, yeah. It yeah. Not anymore. Mind games, though. I'm, I'm going on vile. Oh wait, 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 wait. You didn't hear that. Maybe I'm not going Mind vile games. on my barber so. anymore. You know, maybe I'm just gonna keep it swift. Okay, so okay, if you match Swift's up into me, about as slow as the violent, anyways. Shut up. Anybody? Whoa. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, my sets are not bad. Okay, all right. I don't, come on, man. Gotta give me some credit, bro. No, no, your, your barber was fine. Your barber was fine. I just mean actually saw. Uh, your account. <laughs> yeah, I saw Island Chiwu. It was uh, pretty nice. Yeah, I did too. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Nice oh, job. thank you. Yeah, did you know Congrats. that that it only looks okay now, from the runes I got in the last like maybe couple of like maybe the last year of farming Chibi Tent. Out yeah, of the that's whole... why you showed it, right? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, exactly. That's the only time I showed it. Before that, <laughs> yeah, you'd be laughing. Bro. Well, it has the event runes, right? No, no, no. The event rune went into oh, okay. the the Barbara. The, that, that's a crit damage one. The thirty something speed is a crit damage. So, I mean, crit damage. You was never uh, gonna nice. see the light of day. You guys will never ever see my Chibi. Huh? I I I seen it before. I can see it again. Really? Yeah. There's only like three people in the world that seen my Chiru. I, saw I think it. Silent, Patrick, and and Ken. No, Ken hasn't seen it. Really? Wait, has he seen it? No, I don't think so. I didn't want to see your Chiru, anyways. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, if you guys never tried Barbara on uh violent, it's pretty awesome on violent because it absorbs attack bar, it pushes attack bar, and um, yeah, it could it could just be right between um your stripper and your bruisers. So it boosts up your bruisers, but yeah. For, have different for all the all the barber users out there in the world, um, is there anything more satisfying than that S two dude? Like that S two feels so good. Like certain skills on certain units yes. feel so good in oh, human form. In yes. human form too. In human form. That ugh, and they usually do like insane amounts of damage, man. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So especially I can imagine if you're on Vio, that probably feels yes. even more crazy. You S2 know. S two to S three. Oh my god, best feeling ever, right? Or if you're using on turn, one, on turn one and you delete something. That happens like fair oh, amount. Man. If yes, you're so using Barber and Chew together and your Chew is skill twos and then you defense break with the Barber skill two, you get fifty percent attack bar. It's so much free turns. It's so good. It's that skill two is just like, insane. people. Like a swift Barber into like a Tyrannus Ragdoll comp, for example, is gonna be a lot weaker than Violent. Yes. Because, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's an example where like Violent is a lot better, of course. I just realized everyone here has Barbara, right? Except for Obabo. Yeah. But you have you have Savannah, right? Yeah, yeah Savannah. So who here has all three of them? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, which one I'm like, thank God. I'm which one, which one are you missing, Thompson? You're missing Savannah, right? Don't talk to me. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm curious. I'm asking a serious question because I only have Barb. I have two um, Barb. I'm saying it unseriously. But yeah, no, I, I don't have a uh, Savannah. And Eileen, you only have Barbara too, right? I have two barbs. Right. That's what I got. That's it. Two barbs. Yeah, I have two barbs. <laughs> Are you, did you yeah, feed them or you feed the other one? Two uh, I, guess. I, I still have the other one. I didn't feed any of my dupes yet, but uh, I'm, I'm considering it. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to keep a second one. Like, I'm going to skill it up, really? I mean, yeah. So, question, I guess, married, right? for the meta. Married, right? How do you feel about Masha going forward? Do you think Masha will be notably worse, a little bit worse, or about the same? I think Masha, the... I would say, is probably... The one that's the least changed, because because of the nature of the comps you actually use it, use it with, it's like very heavy. Masha Fran has to be more tankier, right? Yeah, but I think yeah, a, a lot of people are going tankier, Masha. A lot of people are already going tankier. Yeah. Go ahead. Who's talking? Right, Me. Uh, 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 yeah, Rahu. go ahead, go ahead, Obabo. Obabo and then Lucky. Go ahead. Yeah, because I feel like it was already shifting towards like tankier Masha mm. generally. Okay. And I think it's. One thing that's overlooked is that you also keep an official effect when you jump off. And people generally want to like target your just like brute force down your Masha, even in a Vela Jewel or Frank comp or whatever. And then you still keep like the immunity. 
So for her, it's like, it's still a little bit of a nerf, but overall, it's not that bad for her. I would say. Oh, were you going to say Lucky? Pretty much the same, just that she's moving away from that attack build to a HP build. More for that turn cycling as well. That's the main reason why she was... The more turns you take with her, the more damage output you're going to get, essentially. So you don't really need as much attack as what people started figuring out with them, with Masha. All right, they're speed scaling. That's the, that's the awesome part about them. And that's the power of them. And she gains speed, right? How much speed did she get after max stacked? She gets like... 75, I think. Oh, so much, dude. So much speed. And that's percentage, so... Yeah. It's even more. That's crazy. Usually, you'll never pick it, but when you get Vertihill and Masha together, if you guys ever tried it, it feels so good. It's like the most best feeling in the world. You have Masha and Vertihill. Not that you'll ever do it, but because it's like really second, tired. Second only to like Masha Ragdoll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Masha, Masha, Masha Ragdoll sounds pretty yeah, crazy. Masha Bird feels Ooh, so yeah, wait, good. What about, what about Masha with Wedgeot? Isn't Masha Wedgeot really good too? Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, great. I don't yeah. know Wedgeot either. Yeah, I know. <laughs> great. <laughs> well, no, he said, he said second too. I feel like, is, would you think, do you think Bird's better? I think Wedgeot's better for that, right? Just because it's whatever the speed. Well, lead. yeah, Wedgeot um, is better for Masha than Bird. But Ragdoll is still number one, I would say. He's Ragdoll is number one. Yeah. Just use all of them together. Just use Ragdoll, Wedgeot, Masha, and just, just and then, and, and then you have Anti Crit and your Ragdoll just cries. But then you die to CC. That's that's the issue. True. Yeah. And they just ban the Masha, yeah, and then you, they just bring like heavy sustain comps. <laughs> no, they ban your they ban your one, they ban your one immunity. Or oh not, yeah, whatever I have a question. You choose. Yeah, it's, it's a really bad draft. It's you're not gonna get yeah. both of them, but yeah. I have a question. I don't about think it in the game. Yeah. If you have an, if you really have good. if you have Iliana and Masha together versus a Tian Lang, how does the interaction work for attack bar? I guess Tian Lang halves the attack bar, but Masha gets double attack bar? So does it work like it just goes to Masha, normal? Masha doesn't get double attack bar. But she gets bonus, right? Just a bit of bonus? No. It's just uh, decrease that she she gets less uh, decrease from like health or gain and stuff. Okay. I thought, I thought so she Masha doesn't actually gets get more. a decrease and she gets doesn't... a gain, right? No, she doesn't. She Not from Iliana. Wait. Like when you boost Iliana, Iliana only gives it a hundred. You could. I actually it. thought she got double ATB as well, but it's only for uh, reduction. It's Fifty percent bonus. Yeah, she gets bonus, it's but maybe bonus. It, maybe the skill is filled with the attack is. bar is different from gaining attack bar. So I'm reading it. Wait, it the is. attack bar increasing skill effect granted on yourself increases by fifty percent. Okay, I guess I'm. Uh, I guess I'm trolling. Yeah. So, no, no, no. So but does that um, <laughs> but no. when you hit it with Iliana, you could still get cut because Iliana. Fills the attack bar to full. It yeah, doesn't like. So DJ DJ saying monster. that the words fill and boost are two different words. I so guess does Eliana yeah. fill yeah. or does she? But get you still 100%? get a stack. She what does she do? She so she fills she the fills. difference till one hundred percent. So she's not the same as uh, like a Tion. Yeah, she doesn't Tion give one hundred percent. Gives the one hundred percent attack bar, right? So, but doesn't yeah. she? You well, say fill too. Or fills the attack bar. Like you don't get two hundred percent attack bar if Eliana second skills the Masha. That's what I'm saying. Huh. But you get 150, or you don't, right? It's just, it's just like filled. 150. No, you don't. You can still get cut. Huh? It feels like I'm in like two different timelines now. Because I know that I had like a discussion on stream about that just like a few weeks ago. Yeah. So weird. No, I mean, but this this is good. This is like knowledge to know. It's all these little details that make a big difference. These little interactions make a big difference when you're doing RTS in uh in, so, in these moments knowing this I, i'm pretty sure that phil is plus 100 percent because it's kona mia's is plus 100 percent and it says phil yeah it's phil but maybe, so maybe you don't get 150 for yeah so she'll get 150 but then so with tian lang there does that mean she gets 75 mm, that's, oh, yeah. that's what i'm wondering i'm wondering what the mechanic works when there's like a boost i think so. she gets extra right and then tian lang reduces like where does the reduction come in i think she gets 50 man right so she just, did she just get half of what she would normally gain? So 75 then. Yeah. I don't know, weird, weird question. I just thought about okay. it the other day. So we were talking about Tian Lang so much. So I, thought I mean, it, it. it makes a difference Someone on the math, stopped. right? It makes a difference on the math when the calculation is, is calculated. Is when, is she calculated before? Is that 50% increase that Masha gets calculated before? Or is it calculated after the Tian Lang passive? Mm -hmm. Right. It shouldn't it shouldn't theoretically matter. But I'm wondering if there's just like any weird interaction that like is not considered. Like maybe it's not as like maybe maybe it's not actually like a straightforward calculation where we just say okay, this adds this and then reduce this. Give me like five minutes and I'll find out. Do you have a Tian Lang on an account? Yeah, do I have a Tian Lang on an account? Oh my god. 
No, it just works normally without the Masha passive because Masha's passive doesn't kick in without the uh, Ileana boost. Hmm. Yeah. I'll find that in a sec anyway. Okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting mechanic to to discuss because Ileana is used quite a bit. Masha is used quite a bit. So it's an interaction that, that happens. But I guess with Tian Lang, um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, other units that you guys want to talk about, unless you want you guys want to keep talking about the Beast Riders, uh, Monkey Kings, right? Uh, that's kind of like the other unit that's kind of hyped, yeah, potentially being used. Uh, do you guys have it built? And do you guys seeing goods, the pros and the cons of it, uh, of any of these being used against any teams or units? I mean, the uh, the win one got, I mean, a pretty nice change from the, the skill two becoming two turns because he already gave himself 50% attack bar. So if you are having a situation where you can pick him, He's a pretty nice bruiser, but the thing is, when are you going to really pick him in a speed meta, I guess? Oh, pick him in also, a speed meta because he's got base speed. Let's go. I mean, like, he as a first turn unit, though, he doesn't set up, like, with a strip or anything. So if you have, like, a Savannah, you're going to take Savannah more, right? He's basically but, uh, just, uh, I, I have nothing. I'm playing turn two. I've conceded turn one. I'm going to pick this win Monkey King. Yeah. Well, if somebody went, like, heavy water, right, you'll take him. And in that case, he'd be pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Like as a barber counter, potentially, right? Decent against figure too. Not amazing, but decent. He'd be good for siege, like a siege, a siege tank. Like the buff helps him in that aspect. He was already good against uh, Dana and a water threat. All right, what I miss? Sorry. Just We've about, concluded uh, that Bale is OP. Bale is OP. Oh my god, 8%. Mm -hmm. That's all he needed to do. God damn. That's all he needed. Gildner, just give, give, just give Gildner 8% more healing and Narsha 8% more damage. I think we're good. Right? Oh, you can't, you can't just say that. You can't just, <laughs> you can't just dog Thompson like that. That's that's toxic. Hey, 8% seems to solve it all, so why not? Right? Makes sense? <clears throat> so she feels to like... eight. Sorry, this is totally off topic. But but she feels to like 80% attack bar when I used it. So yeah, that's about it's the really 75 weird. because of the base. So 75, level. yeah. Yeah. So 75 that's okay 70. so it is straightforward there's no like weird inconsistencies no nah. that's it good to know good to know okay so uh did i miss the discussion on wind monkey king and water monkey king then i still i'm fire monkey king uh i said like his pick his pick usage isn't too different right you're not going to really take him so much in a speed meta unless somebody went like really heavy water and like first versus like a barbara wind monkey is a lot better right because now he takes he gets 50 percent attack bar when he takes the skill two and it's only on a two-turn cooldown. So if he procs, he gets to really cycle. Yeah, and, and usually when there's Barbara being picked, they're, ne they're never touching your Wind Monkey King. So passive has a chance to stun. And stun now, if killed in human form, you're kind of screwed as well, right? Inabilities are, are great. So I think it would be good against Barbara's. Um, what else water units are there? Mina. Mina. Vigor, like oh, yeah. Said. Very good against Minas. It's true. Vigor, so. like Tyler said. Oh, Vigor. Vigor is very good as well. And I think more people should lean more towards and try a damage build or, or a heavier damage build with it, right? A nice amount of HP, but a heavier damage build. I think you have some flexibility with the passive and the damage reduction you take to go more damage build. And you'll you'll find that the thing probably, it, it, hit, it hits really hard. Packs a really, really big punch behind the Wind Monkey King. So, um, I have a question for you guys. Josephine's before, but uh, Josephine's kind of not as a meta pick anymore. True. What were you gonna say, Tom? Have, have any of you guys used like a Bruiser Ramahan on a faster build with Gany and Thor? I'm just just curious. I that have was tried. Was I, I I was a big Ramahan user myself. Yes, I ran uh, Ramahan, Laura, Gany Hathor stuff. You know, it has speedly. You know. Yeah. yeah I was just wondering because like the defense break and the actual nuke does give you potential to kill certain things and deal with like it's a second option against like I guess Josephine. It's not amazing, but and you can also like kill fire units if you land one defense break. It's not reliable, show... but like is it is it something that could be decent? I'm not sure what you meant with like on a faster build. Do you mean that it's going above like both Gen and Hathor? To, like, I mean, I mean like I mean like a 230 Bruiser built. On it. Okay, yeah, th oh, that's what I've been like running on all time. And I did do a little bit of, but it t it took a while until I got both Gen and Hathor. But yeah, I think it can be a pretty good uh, speed lead for that. Because I, I like using him yesterday, I fell in love. I instantly double monded him. I was like, this unit's awesome. The yeah, like, like, I want to, I want to give it a go. The third skill with defense buff is like an easy 26k kind of, and then you get an extra turn and then you do whatever you want. Yeah. 
And as well, I think we should build Ramahan because then I can synergize him with Laura. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what's going on here. So Laura gets another chance until next week. Laura, I think <laughs> Laura's best friend is Ramahan. If you're playing Genya after, I guess, but it's so boring, man. Yeah, winning is boring, right? <laughs> but like not. Ramahan into a team with no defense break is pretty much as scary as a Artemil when you have no defense breaks. It's pretty much the same thing. Like whenever the Ramon moves, if he procs once, you're just dead. His cooldowns are really low too. His smother's only three yeah. turns, and if you kill, you get an extra turn too. So, yeah. And the strip skill that is is nice. The, stri the stripping opportunity is nice, right? That's two strips, right? I think. And uh, it strips, and no, the damage strip. is pretty good. One strip. One strip. On second skill. Oh yeah, yeah. It's second so skill strip. When do you pick him though, in like draft order wise? Because people are gonna start going like heavy fire into you, or like Vanessa. Pick him or five or, yeah. Yeah. So it's slot five. Yep. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're Ganyha Thoring, I think people are, you're going to be seeing some Fire Monkey Kings. I think people are going to tr test them out and try it out. Even if it's not crazy, or maybe it is crazy, people are going to be bringing out that Fire Monkey King soon. As soon as this next season starts, and they see Ganyha Thor, they will be using it. Yeah, they will be using it. But man, Vigor just shits on him still. <laughs> I don't think there's too many cases you can... Like, the if you look at what Skit was playing, right? He was playing mm -hmm. Ganyha Hathor, Chiwu, Vigor as, like, his main core. There's no opportunity to really use a, uh, a Fire Monkey as a counter to that. Because you get lapped like turn cycle wise and then the kid itself just counters fire monkey pretty hard i go on defense break bro i got 100 res bro but you know I, every time you touch me i gain res bro I guess if you do bring in to uh, utilize if you do bring in like fire monkey over there they have to think a lot right because if you ban the vigor then you know unless they bring in two water threats then you bring the fire monkey you could ban like you know one of the fire you know yeah. one of the water threats. it really depends how the draft pans out though uh, it really um, depends. It's going to be like last yeah. picks, right? It's going to be a slot five, usually most of the time. Four or five is where it's going to be. So I don't know if you would risk it, right? If they didn't draft Rigor yet and they, their last pick and you're going up against that. I don't know if you want to risk a slot, you know, four or five before they go and draft it. So it really depended. Go ahead, Bobble. Yeah, because yeah, the thing, I don't know that many comps that don't have like a defense break nowadays. Even like the the CC slow cleaves, they take like bonus, right? Not just the, mm -hmm. the daughters and the stunners. It's true. Defense break it, will Because really there's been a lot of games where I picked like Ganyat or Chiwu, and then they go like straight into a full fire with like Fire Monkey, Juno and stuff. And then I just slam like Abelio and uh, like Chow or uh, Vigor or whatever. Hey man, even building like an Igor again. Like if yeah. you just re an Igor, you will like goodbye Fire Monkey, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to test them out though. I'm not going to shut them down right away, but I'm going to test them out and uh, see how it goes. Right, but the thing is that I thought about it and I was like, damn, am I really gonna test this out? Because I'm a, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I'm a pretty big uh, Ganyha Thor picker. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll just be testing it out against but, myself instead of against <laughs> other people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, but um, the Fire Monkey was always better against like Oki Gany than Ganyha Hathor. So, yep, yeah, mm, really yeah true, 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 right? So, maybe when we see Oki's, then you're gonna be seeing that draft come out, true, uh huh. Uh, and last one we need to touch up on Water Monkey King. I mean, unnecessary making it six hits, but better now? Maybe being more used now? Yeah, it's this better. But it's, it's not really going to change how much he's uh, used, I don't think. Hmm. Like, it, the, only thing the, buff, the only thing the buff does, I think, is that it allows you to go less a little bit less crit and go more accuracy, so it's more consistent. I think that's, like, the main takeaway. I mean, the but six overall, hits is nice, like too. It's, yeah. For Triana's, right? When you're killing certain units, not the Triana, but any other units, it makes mm -hmm. it a lot nicer than with the six hits. Right? Yeah, it's nice, but it's not like something that would change when you draft him, pretty much. Because mm -hmm. he's still already like a killer through Triana and everything. Right. I think it's going to just be a better uh, uh, first turn stripper for a lot of players because of that high base speed from the Water Monkey King. Right? And then now the more flexibility of being able to build him, you know, with, with less of the crit rate and more of the accuracy, like you said, to strip will be really nice. I mean, you shouldn't miss any debuff. I mean, any buffs from stripping. If you miss a strip with your Water Monkey King now, I don't know, man. That's some that's some dog shit luck, dude. You got six I used, hits. Uh, Water Monkey King a lot last year, and uh, when Water Monkey King missed a strip first turn, you pretty it's really hard to come back from that. I brought yeah. Water Monkey King against uh, Judas. Mm. Yeah, but that was yeah, I mean, you, before you, the Justice stuff, like right? That. that was before the Justice change, I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, any last uh, discussions here? I mean, it's open. Uh, I'll change it to uh, open discussion. Whatever last words you guys have or you want to incorporate. Um, I want to talk about the gargoyles. Okay, uh, oh. go ahead. Go ahead uh, Invictus, but you guys, you guys go ahead that. first because what I want to talk about is kind of like long. Sure. My, mine's really quick. Yeah. It's about the beast monks. 
Have you guys oh, yeah. noticed when they meditate, it cleanses itself and heals the target? Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't cleanse the. Cleanse the it doesn't cleanse the target. Too. Oh. Yeah. That's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, can you verify I didn't hear? Uh, it, it it cleanses uh itself and then it just heals the target. It doesn't cleanse and heal the target. Damn, that was what I was scared of because the wording on it said cleanse yourself and heal. I thought I thought it was conditional, right? So I tested it day one, and it just yeah, it 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 is what it is in the wording. It does cleanse itself, and it heals the target still. So, oh, it was such a good idea, and then they just messed it up. Oh, it would have been back on like like, everything always goes right. They do things like fifty percent of like what the buff should be. Yeah. That doesn't make any. That doesn't make any sense, anyways, because we all know, like, isn't there like a like, like why would you need to cleanse yourself as a beast monk, right? Because you're gonna you're if you're gonna violate, you're gonna violate anyways. It's gonna cleanse right out of it to your S three, right? So I, I don't get it. And you can't cleanse inabilities because I mean not inability. Yeah, inabilities because you're stunned, so you're not doing your own S two. So how much value does that really bring? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it makes it slightly more annoying in small instances, but. Yeah, didn't really change much for, much for the meditating. Yeah, I mean, he moves three turns anyway, so he won't have any debuffs on him. So uh, <laughs> doesn't really matter, does it? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh. All right, uh, I what are you going to say? question for Obabo. Sure. Hmm? Uh, is the Han as OP as we all assume it is? Or Oh, we forgot about uh, that. Real deal. He doesn't want to talk about it. He's hiding it. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Must be good. Must be good. Spill the beans, sir. I wouldn't say that it's like pre worthy. That's the most important uh, thing to take away. But now it's it's uh, pretty good. I think I it's think still like. Might... Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I think it's still gated a lot behind his uh, leader skill, but he's still very good now, even without it. But like people have like, I was fighting diligent, and he just goes like Jana wounds uh, uh, Han, yeah, and that's, that's so Han. dirty. Oh, oh, I know that might be my yeah. most wanted L and D nat five right now, a Han. Wait, yeah, Han with Jana is insane. Wait, that's actually I'm so gross. Jana Han combos are gonna see next season. <laughs> Wait, that's so gross. The thing Jeez. is, um, you know what's crazy? I pulled a, a Narsha that day, and like two hours later, my guildie pulled a Han. Mm. Oh, that feels bad. <laughs> Wait, isn't that so disgusting? Han, Wunsa, Gianna, Nefties? X- you don't need Wunsa, but yeah. Wait, that's actually yeah. like almost Exodia. What's the last one for Exodia? That's like Asima. literally almost Exodia. Just pick a Sima. It doesn't even matter if you, do, you don't even need the speed advantage with the Sima. Just pick a Sima. Wait, holy fuck. That's actually... Wait, that's actually Exodia. Wait, yeah. that might yeah, be the most Exodia. Until, uh, trip Revenge Bird comes. Or you just pick the bird. You just take the bird away first. <laughs> you literally just first pick the bird. <laughs> because you have I mean, speed leads no matter comes, what, I right? Yeah. I don't if know. He, what is that Terry's going to do with the Nefties Gianna, If he right? puts the Han before the Gianna on Swift, the bird's dead, right? True. Oh, yeah. The last unit. Yeah, you can pick. You can pick um Will Young in that comp now. Bit of attack oh! by gauge. Oh, and oh, I think about it. And another. <laughs> Gross, dude. Wait, that is Exodia. Because Actually, even I think... even Will Young without crit damage, you got defense break from Nefties. Next turn, your S three is. Go- I mean, your 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 S three that nukes is gonna kill, right? It's gonna do a lot of damage. Or Trinity. Or Trinity. No, lie, okay, I think, no, no, I no, think Zeroth right. is actually extremely good in that fifth slot because you can either choose to cleanse your team or you can even out their HP and then nuke them. Oh, so you, you can... have you have both options. It's like a damage focused Annabelle, yeah. basically. Or well, Oziana, the dark beast rider that does damage oh. based on attack bar pushback. Yeah. <laughs> Puts him down to zero. Put him down to zero and do big damage and probably get the second turn. Damn, I see why Thompson wants the Han now. I got light Ziana. I'm good. But I think. So you need Sierra a Jin. Can... I think Sierra is pretty similar to uh, to Han in that slot for a team like that. It's a little bit better speed lead, but but you also like missed opportunity to, to like stack bombs on silence targets. So you're less you're you're more prone to like people proking out on you. I must imagine it must be hard to get like a hundred percent crit rate on Han. Yeah, it's like, like thing is, is already maximum. Thing is, then like all of a sudden like Han wasn't the only LD five like a buff for me. And like that dude also needs crit rate, so I'm like in a weird, uh, weird spot right now. Must be a nice first world problem. Yeah. Yeah. Like randomly, just two of your LD buffs, LD fives gets buffed instead, instead of one. Yeah. How much you pay him, dude? Tell us right now. How much you pay him, dude? <laughs> oh, then you know he's free to play. Um, that's how it works. No, it was actually. Be... It was actually one of the six year special packs, but then I didn't get anything from that. But then the next one from, uh, like the shop. 
Uh, give it. The punching so like the one, the like one, the, the, the multi punch. Uh, I didn't try him that much yet because I've been testing Han first because less because I think he's more of a uh, question mark. But yeah, they they both need like the same set, so it's gonna be super hard. Hmm. I have like my Han on like one fifteen efficiency now, and I still feel like he's uh, lacking. And it's so hard wow. to get those numbers with like hundred crit as well, because there's so yeah, many. Just... Uh, just imagine, man, setting up yourself to kill something. Oh, it feels so good with Han, dude. But yeah, like Han, he's been pretty nice, but I also think he suffers a lot more than Diana from that, like, getting cut problem. Because yeah, since he's, he's actually he's running... Route. Yeah. Hmm? Use him with Rauk, then you can keep cycling that S3. Yeah, that's true. true. Oh, dude, that's gross. That's a fun toy, though, you got, you must say. Oh. Yeah, regardless of the end just, result, that's a super fun just toy. Just use Ileana. Oh, yeah. That also oh, yeah, yeah, it. <laughs> right, because you could set up your defense break and then just <laughs> keep yourself gross. safe. That's so gross. You're getting uh, you're getting Han pre banned for sure, Obabo. During his I mean, I hope so because then I just <laughs> lose some other stuff. That would be nice. That's your buff, like a, right? You, uh, get a, you, you get you get buff this season for SWC by getting a uh, immediate pre ban, opening up flexibility yeah. for your other drafts. True. Yeah, little did you know, you're not gonna even ruin the Han. Yeah. Peppy laugh. <laughs> I mean, that would probably be smart because he actually like requires the best runes in your account, I feel. Yeah. And then he's still kind on the slower side as well. Because of because of all the stats. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, last topic we got here, uh, Tyler. What what kind of questions do you have to bring up? I wanted. I I had an idea for how to make the gargoyles like a little bit better and not as terrible. Okay. Um. Go ahead. So the the gargoyles, a lot of their a lot of their mechanic involves like being in stone form and getting hit in stone form because of like the provoke mechanics. I think in their stone form, I think if they dropped speed a little bit, it would help them a lot. I know that sounds really weird because normally you never want to like drop speed on your own units. But I think if like, especially for Fanaka, for Fanaka, if you stone form and you drop speed by like 20%, he would be like quite a bit better. No, it doesn't sound weird at all, dude. The uh, string oh, master, one of them doesn't, Wait, it's one of the LD ones. She reduces yeah. her attack bar, right? To stay yeah. in the form of your... so yeah. Some, Something like that would be really, really nice. Right? And, oh, man. If you could get the... If you could get starts the fight in stone form, the light one would be nuts because AoE would be so punished. If he started in stone form, you can't AoE on the first turn because you'd lose all your cooldowns. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah. He, would, he would be like a hard counter to anyone who wants to AoE you. Well, assuming you does don't it, have well... Doesn't he just like, provoke everything off will as well, then? Yeah. No, no. Assuming you yeah. don't have well, right? Assuming you don't have well, because it doesn't mm -hmm. go through well. So if I'm like first turn uh, AoEing you, I don't then... actually know about that. It, it doesn't go through well. I'm pretty sure it doesn't go through. The, well. the cooldown reset? Yeah. Or does it go through well? I have no idea. I've never, no, it, I've it never attacked anyone with well, well. I guess well, I can tell you it through well. Well, he won't provoke them. So yeah. Right, but he was saying first turn AoE, yeah. right? If you start in stone form, I'm saying it won't make too much of a difference. Yeah, but I was thinking one. like if he actually starts in stone form, does he like provoke? Would he provoke no. everything? You have to attack. You have to attack to provoke. If he just like starts the fight in stone form, it would be a little bit better. Because then it would force right. people to like not have will like not to attack him. So, so, so light one doesn't provoke when he, like, activates stone form. He he, he provokes into the stone form. So you AOE provoke okay. yeah. and then change to stone form. I just yeah. I wish like they had the exactly like you were saying with the string master. Like if the speed was reduced a little bit, it would make him a lot more viable. Because like the issues that I have using him is people run immunity right. So like you have to strip, and it's either the strippers have despair, so you stun them and then it's useless. Or you slow debuff them and then it's useless, or they're just not that fast. You know, they used an attack bar boost for first turn and then their second turn they're not fast enough to keep up. I was thinking we talked about this before in a podcast with uh, GGHK, but we said like threat state potentially uh, added into the stone form could be pretty strong because we are some other people are saying oh dark art master would be kind of cool with Fanaka and I was like oh that's pretty true right because anything you can do to hundred percent force their hand to attack it is gonna be big. So threat state. Could be a factor reducing the damage as well that they take even further so it would be an interesting mechanic i thought that's what we're going to see in the you know the 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 buffs for them but unfortunately not i think they definitely would be used if they had threat state for sure yep all right um i just need a dark oh. art master that's all i need oh okay yeah. so that is that, is that <laughs> what you're asking be for? my first ld nat 5 is a dark art master ah. and then i'll use finaka every game uh, well, or a your... Nyx. I'll take a Nyx too, maybe. There's your first power problem. Thinking you're gonna get an LD Nat 5. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> It'll uh, come when you least wait. expect it, trust me, man. It's like fishing, bro. Stop stop thinking about it, bro. It'll just it will just pop. One day you just will uh, be like, oops, I actually clicked it up. Oh wow. I'm summoning LD scrolls on podcast from now on. <laughs> you want a Mananana too? Yeah. 
Hey, that was like me last week, man. I, I know, I that's why. Yeah. I want it. You want a Manan Is that what I you I want say? something. Oh, okay. Got it. There's a lot of scrolls. A lot of scrolls. We're getting there. Are, are you saving LDs right now, uh, Tyler? I just summoned them last week. I'm at 561 summoned. Okay. Well, next time you save up, a, uh, save up a bunch, uh, let me know. Uh, I usually, I'll, I'll, join usually you, I'll join you live on voice or something 20. like that and hang out with you. Maybe I'll yeah, chill. sure. Give some good vibes. Give some juju. I just, I, I'm thinking like maybe, maybe I just save up until we meet up next, and then we just do it in person. Oh shit! Because okay. I'm pretty sure the next time we can actually go to like a real life event, I'll probably have like almost 70 LD scrolls. Shit, we'll also probably be about 70 years old. But hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when this COVID true, stuff's true. ending, bro. But it's gonna be a little while, bro. It's gonna be a little bit. <laughs> But all right, hey, uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. Thank you guys all so much for joining me. going to put everybody's links down below so you guys can check out their streams. I like to say everybody's been streaming pretty good, right? Maybe Thompson will be doing a little bit more streams, but everybody's been streaming quite a bit. And it's nice to see the Summoners War community, right? A lot of people streaming, lots of streams for you guys to enjoy and watch. It's nice to see our category. You have Summoners War continue to grow. So check out those, uh, those streams. Get down below. Give me some comments. Give me your suggestions for the future. Hit that like, and I'll see you guys on the next live streamer podcast. Peace out. Bye. Thanks, guys. Yeah.